Hello, and welcome to What Am I Rolling? A twice monthly RPG one shot podcast hosted by me, Fiona. This is part two of our Solemn Vale one shot, so make sure you listen to the first part before continuing on with this episode. So, as you may have guessed it, this one shot is a little bit different to our previous one shots, as it was a live stream game for Actual Play UK, a streaming channel for UK based TTRPG podcasts to come together and create collaborations. This episode's audio was taken from that live stream, and you can watch the original stream on Actual Play UK's YouTube channel. I'll put a link to it on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode's show notes. A massive thank you to Actual Play UK for hosting this game, with a special shout out to John for being a wonderful producer and tech for the streams. I am really pleased with how this game came out, and I am so thankful we got the opportunity to run it. I'm also 100% running Solemn Vale again. It just ticks all the boxes for me as someone who loves horror and as a GM. So please go check out Actual Play UK on Twitch. You can watch the VODs of previous games on Actual Play UK's YouTube channel. Both those links, along with where you can get Solemn Vale, are in this episode's show notes. Our team play members of a BBC crew who have made the trip to Solemn Vale to film a segment for the popular children's TV show, Noel's Heroes featuring up-and-coming rising star Noel Kelly and his mascot nemesis, Lord Peter. The team are looking to do a candid drop-in on the Neville family, whose son, Marcus, won a competition to meet Noel. However, upon arrival at the Neville home, the team discovered that the house had been broken into and that the whole family was missing. After investigating the house and questioning the neighbours, it became apparent that something strange had happened to the Nevilles and that the locals didn't want to involve themselves in it. As the team considered their options for filming, they suddenly realised that presenter Noel was nowhere to be seen. After discovering a trail of wet footprints, the team, with great reluctance, ventured into the woods behind the Neville's house, in search of the missing child and their missing presenter. Solemn Vale uses a system called the Weird Abacus, it's a system that uses attribute pools, dice, and a simple bidding mechanic to support the flow of the fiction. When faced with threats and challenges, the players can draw upon the weird to tilt the odds in their character's favour. But beware, the consequences of doing so will linger, risking outcomes both fair and foul. There are two types of roles, challenge roles and influence roles. To resolve a challenge, one of the players will attempt a challenge roll which is rolling 1d6 with the aim of matching or exceeding the challenge value that has been set. Before rolling, the player can choose to assign points from one of their three abilities, mind, body or soul, to the roll in order to boost the outcome. Every ability point assigned increases the result on the die by one, so it's a point for point trade. Once the points are assigned, the player makes the roll. If the result is equal to or greater than the challenge value, they overcome it. If they fail to overcome a challenge, well, there's consequences to be had. Damage in the form of reducing an ability score, or scratching out an ability completely, or much worse. Influence roles are when the narrator may want to determine which character is affected by a particular twist of the narrative, or to pose a minor contest which doesn't warrant a challenge, per se, but could shape the outcome of the current scene. These roles are based on either a character's initial ability score or their current weird score. When the narrator calls for an influence roll, the players will assemble as many d6s as their character has in whichever value has been asked for. They will then roll their dice pools and note the highest value on any of their die as their result. The final two elements I'm going to briefly talk about are the stage rules and the weird pool. Each story in Solemn Vale has a set of overarching stage rules affecting it. They are distinct mechanical elements that may reoccur across several scenes, play a key role in how the game unfolds, or otherwise are core to its concept or theme. These rules set the stage, so to speak. 
They combine with any stage rules for locations, denizens, or other effects at work to create the challenges in each scene that the players have to overcome. Then there's the weird pool. At the beginning of each scene, the narrator assembles a weird pool of points equal to the number of characters plus one. A player can draw a weird point from the scene pool and add it to their character's personal pool in order to do one of the following mechanics. Add a plus one to the result of a challenge roll after the die has been rolled. Allow the character to spend points from a different ability than normal on a single challenge roll. Allow the character to spend points on a challenge that they are not present in the scene for. And much, much more. At the end of the scene, all remaining weird points in the pool are lost, and the pool is then refreshed when the next scene begins. Characters' personal weird pools remain, however, and will likely rise throughout the game as players draw on the weird pool further and further. One last thing before we begin. Naturally, there are times in this one shot where the players and myself, mostly myself, get the rules wrong or forget something plot-wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes, and what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. So, with all that out of the way, let's get back to Solemn Vale. Hello, 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 everyone. Wave to the TV people at home. Greetings, local residents and visitors far and wide to Actual Play UK. My name is Fiona, I use she, her pronouns, and I have the humble honour and the privilege of being the narrator for tonight's session of Solemn Veil, vale, published by Dirty Vortex. Now, before I get this wonderful cast to introduce themselves and to introduce the characters that we created last week, I'm going to quickly describe what Solemn Veil vale is and put, a, put forward like a, a small content warning for tonight's game. So, Sol what is Solemn Vale? Solemn Vale is a quaint little town in the southwest of England, isolated from the world by a jagged coastline and dense woodland, scarred by mining works thrashing and rioting at the threat of closure. The close-knit community gives rise to a village mentality, where the newest visitors and the smallest infractions can become the sources of gossip and scandal overnight. It is a land steeped in history, where forgotten sects pray to uh, pagan gods in the dark corners of Thatcher's Britain. Solemn Vale is actually a narratively driven role, uh, role telling game, but also a storytelling game published by Dirty Vortex, which is set against the backdrop of a 1970s England, which explores the world of folk horror and the supernatural. Each of these games is a communal storytelling experience, and our players are going to be taken on the roles of visitors to this village, ensnared in a tale of mystery and survival. Gu uh, guided by the narrator, that's me, each story is going to deliver a small little glimpse into the grim underbelly of the veil and the festering evil that feeds it. Success is by no means certain as the weird corrupts and destroys all who confront it. Solemn Veil, vale, if anything, is a state of mind, a twisted and macabre uh, feeling, laced with dread and paranoia, and occasionally tinged with dark humour. It is the darkness in the cave, the shopkeep's stern glare, the lone voice urging you to go forward when every sight, sound, and shiver of your spine tells you to turn back. Now, as you might have guessed, this particular game contains many horror themes and variations thereupon. As a cast, we've gone over safety tools, and we've discussed our lines of veils off uh, stream, but I just want to take a moment to speak to you, the visitors or residents of Solemn Veil, who are watching this stream or the VOD later on. I wish to give you permission to step away and look after yourselves if things get a little bit too much. As I always say, your well-being is more important than the dice rolls on the table. Now, with all that out of the way, we're going to go clockwise from me, because I know I'm in the middle, because I'm special. Uh, we're going to go first uh, over to the left, and I would like our cast uh, to introduce themselves, uh, their name, pronouns, who, who are they playing in tonight's session of Solemn Vale? And I've, as always, we have an icebreaker sort of uh, little ditty at the beginning, and I want them to tell me uh, a horror film or TV show that they recommend to us. So let's start over on my left, please. Adam, I think. Yeah. Well, hello, my name is... Um, <clears throat> sorry, apparently I can't speak for this show until I'm speaking. Oh, well. uh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> mm. 
It's good stuff. Uh, hi, my name is Adam. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm the DM over at Gunpowder Treason No Plot, a mm -hmm. D&D cosmic horror podcast. And tonight I will be reprising a role as Marcus Killian III, an incredibly arrogant, vain, foolhardy man who is the director and cameraman of this little crew. And uh, I guess to answer the question about what I'd recommend, mm -hmm. um, it's a difficult one, but I, I wanted to recommend, if you haven't seen it, the original Hellraiser movie. Oh, I say, yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a horror movie that doesn't get spoken about as much as it probably should. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of a classic. So that's oh, my recommendation. It. Thank you very much for that. And welcome to Solemn Vale. or welcome back, even. Uh, next up on my screen is James. Hi, uh, I'm James Barbarossa. Uh, and I'm a, a GM and player over at uh, Realms of Peril and Glory. Um, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be playing uh, Heather Clark, a relatively opportunistic um, and, and quite downtrodden emotionally TV <laughs> producer. Um, in terms of horror, I've never been great. I've never been great at horror. Um, <laughs> does, thr does thriller count? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what have you I would say, I would say, um, the, the, I would say that the, the TV show Severance. It's kind of a corporate Ooh, horror, no. right? Like yes. a corporate psychological horror. <laughs> Straight up gave me full blown nightmares. Yeah, yeah. I woke up screaming. Truly, from the show. like the truest horror, which is mm. like modern day corporate capitalism. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's what I recommend. Yeah. That's my recommendation. That's a, a cracking, cracking show. Thing. Absolutely yeah. cracking show. 100 percent agree with that. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to Song of the Hill. Thank you. Uh, next up, Reese. Hello, uh, I'm Reese. Uh, my pronouns are he/him, and I'm playing Colin Doink, whose pronouns are also <laughs> he/him. <laughs> and I have just reminded everyone here that his surname is Doink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the very name conjures up romance, and so. <laughs> Of a sort. <laughs> of a sort. Uh, he's... Uh, so, yes, uh, I'm here representing the actual play uh, YouTube channel Who Lives Who Dice, mm -hmm. um, where I'm a player on that as well. Uh, but Colin, of course, were... Like, were he to know or be aware of anything, it would probably be uh, role-playing games. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, so true. No, and, yeah, so he's he's just really enthused, really happy to be here. Um, in terms <laughs> of horror films, there, uh, there's two. I'm going to be cheeky. I <gasps> know, oh, going to be cheeky. Oh, go on, I'm going to... <laughs> You're going to die, so go on, yeah. have to. <laughs> Treat yourself, have to. Go for um, it. Uh, the John Carpenter's The Thing, uh, oh, which very, very much a, com a comfort film. Um, it's I, it really is. It makes me what? feel weirdly kind of like ah, oh, everything's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other is a, a South Korean uh, film called Hansel and Gretel, not to be confused with Ooh. Hansel and Gretel, uh, the Jeremy Renner film. Yep. Uh, <laughs> di very different films. But yeah, no, uh, it's uh, that, that kind of creeping horror alongside the abstract surrealism, and it just... Uh, it's, Oh, it's good. Ooh. It's good mm. stuff. I haven't heard of that one, so I will put yeah. that on the list afterwards. Thank you. Yeah. And Welcome back to Solemn Vale, uh, Colin. Last but by no means least, Pip. Let's Hello. go, my friend. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm, my name is Pip Gladwin. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, and I am here, uh, much like my colleague uh, James Barbarossa over there, uh, representing the uh, Realms of Peril and Glory <laughs> podcast. Uh, we will not be stopped. Um, and we are legion. Um, uh, tonight, uh, I will be uh, reprising the role of um, Sandy Turner, she, her, mm -hmm. um, uh, a stylist and um, makeup artist to uh, Noel Kelly, but mostly mm -hmm. Noel Kelly's hair. Um, that's what I am here to save. It's Noel Kelly's hair and Colin. Um, uh, <laughs> And um, a horror movie that I like. Um, one mm -hmm. that... Uh, sure. Um, there's one that I really enjoy that is not super well-known. At least I tell people about it and they go, I have no idea what that is. Um, it's a movie called Stakeland. Oh, yeah. um, and it is... It's a 2014, I think. Um, uh, maybe. Um, I'm not going to look it up. Um, 
Uh, no, 2010. I did look it up. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of a. It's got sort of Last of Us vibes in the sense that it's a. It's a. It's a post-apocalyptic. There was it, the zombie outbreak happened, but it's not zombies. It's vampires, Ooh. basically. Um, and the vampires are a bit more zombie-like, but still very much vampires with all your classic vampire weaknesses. It's just there's so many more of them, and there's sort of different types depending on how long you've been one. <sighs> if you were maybe a child when it happened to you and all this kind of stuff and it doesn't Ooh. beat you over the head with lore it just kind of goes you just sort of see it mm. and 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 it's a road movie it's a it's a two people go trying to go from a to b and picking up people along the way and what happens and and there's an element of old <laughs> grizzled veteran of this horrible world training young uh, person to do what they do and it's great it's really good uh, oh, cool. and it has a so-so sequel um oh. <laughs> uh, uh, but i really i really i really uh, i really enjoy it so oh, that's what awesome. i return to from time to time all right i'll check that out that sounds fun and of course it'd be remiss of me not to say my own you know queen of horror over here mm-hmm. um i watched recently thanks to uh, a friend of mine called charlie mendez who is of parable games so he played shiver at all uh that's the guy uh he's recently got a kickstarter coming out called don't play this game uh <laughs> uh solo uh, role-playing game and he recommended loads of horror things to me but he recommended one called uh incantation which is a south korean horror film and uh basically it is about a woman trying to save her her daughter from an uh, entity that has cursed her mm. and it is Incredibly grim. Uh, I well, I did stop it several times. That's the best part of Netflix. You can go, oh, no, thank you. Let's uh, turn on the lights, uh, get a cup of tea, and come back to this. Uh, I definitely, there's moments, I, I as, as much as I love horror, I'm definitely that person that does this with their hands, and I was definitely like this throughout most of it, and there was a horrible bit at the end where something was revealed, and I just went, okay, okay. <laughs> So even I, dear viewers, even I get too creeped out. Highly recommend it, though. It was great fun at 2 a.m. in the morning. Now, let's get back into... So, yeah, of course, I'm so sorry. Sandy, welcome back to Swan and Vale. It's good to have you all back. I was so lucky to have all this pe- all these people visitors. Now, before we go into the recap, I'm going to just, as I always, I always love doing this. I just want to just mention the sort of main mechanics before we go into it. Obviously, throughout the stream, no doubt people will uh, need to remind us and stuff, but I always like doing it at the top so that people know what to look out for. So Solemn Vale is powered by something called the Weird Abacus. It's a system which uh, uses attribute pools, dice, and a simple bidding mechanic to support the flow of fiction. Uh, there are two types of roles that are made in Solemn Vale. They are the challenge roles and the influence roles. Challenge roles are the ones we're going to see the most of, essentially. So when a challenge comes up in a scene, I will give it a challenge of value. And one of the players will attempt to come up overcome this challenge by rolling a d6 now they can spend points from one of their attributes they have three attributes body mind and soul um they can be individually challenged so it's just one person to make alternatively for this my friends we've unlocked scene two so we can do group challenges as well one person will roll but people can contribute uh points to that role now normally though it depends on what the role is so for example if a uh, player is involved in sort of a, a brawling type of check they can only assign points from their body and not necessarily their mind or soul it has to be from uh, an attribute that they act, that, that relates directly to it however we do have something called the weird pool for every scene which again i'll get onto which can help us out in sort of manipulating the checks somewhat but essentially they will spend any points that they, they need to or can, uh, roll a d6 and ha- equal to or over the number I give them, the challenge value, then they succeed. If they fail, well, there's there's consequences. And uh, it could be damage in forms of sort of reducing an ability score or scratching out the ability completely or much worse. The second type of role is the influence role. This is slightly different. It's when I, the narrator, want something to de- I want to determine something that happens to a character, but it's not necessarily one that I, they would spend points on. So something narratively happened. These roles will be either based on the character ability, so those three sort of mind, body, and soul, or their current weird score. So when I call for it, uh, they will assemble as many dice as that character has in a particular value as their initial value. So for example, if you started off with five points in body, uh, and then you I asked for an influence role, of a body but you only have three nets you would still roll five uh, you would still roll five dice yes for, for five d6 and then you count you note what the highest value is 
for that one. So compared to the first one, which was like you roll a d6 plus your points, and then that's the value. Influence rolls, you roll uh, as many d6 as you have points, and the highest, uh, highest value will determine what the roll is. Finally, finally, uh, there's two other elements I want to just quickly talk about. These are the stage rules and the weird pool. Now, each story has a set of overarching stage rules that affect it. Imagine that like to be a play of almost some sort. Uh, these are distinct mechanical elements that can recur across several scenes, maybe play a keynote in how the story unfolds. They could combine with locations or even other denizens to make the challenges in each scene. So the overall rule, I will say for the players now, because we've sort of got into it, now is that all scenes have the stage rule of isolated all the characters must complete a separate foreboding or wits challenge at the end of each scene if they fail they take one damage to all abilities body mind and soul uh and this the, i will say to them the challenge value uh, increases in each scene but there are opportunities to negate this effect so there you go. Um, but that is not, there's all, there's other rules as well that might come into play depending on what kind of checks they do and if they succeed or fail. Finally, finally, let's talk about the weird pool, this beautiful, mysterious mechanic. So in the beginning of each scene, I will assemble a, a weird pool equal to the number of characters plus ones. That is five. Five weird points are up for grabs in each scene. A player can draw a point of weird from the scene pool and add it to their own personal pool to do any of the following. Add a plus one to the result of a challenge die after they've rolled it, or the challenge roll, sorry, uh, to allow them to spend points from a different ability compared to their normal one. Uh, allow them to spend uh, spend points on a challenge if they're not there for. Uh, reduce uh, or increase the result of a single weird roll by one after the dice is rolled. And finally, to introduce a previously encountered ally or friendly denizen to the scene that would not have normally been present. Uh, so there's again, don't worry, we will go through this as, as and when it comes up. But here's an important thing for my players to note is that at the end of the scene, all those remaining weird points in my pool, in the scene's pool, are lost because the pool is then refreshed at the, end, at the beginning of the next scene. Your personal weird pools remain and they're likely to rise throughout the game as you draw on the weird pool further and further. There's also ways to recover ability points, uh, which we sort of went over last session, but of course we'll do it this session because there will be a time when you move to another scene. The only thing to mention is that if you have an ability that is already scratched out and then you would require to do a check from that ability or it will require to be scratched out again, you are defeated. Mm -hmm. That could mean death <clears throat> or much worse. I think that's everything I have to say on that. Are you folks ready for my little, little, little recap before we dive into tonight's session? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at these cheeky chappies. I'm excited. <laughs> so our team are playing at BBC Crew, who have made the trip to Solomvale to film a segment for the popular kids' TV show, Noel's Heroes, featuring Noel Kelly and his nemesis, Lord Peter. No. <laughs> <laughs> The plan is to interview one Marcus Neville, a 10-year-old uh, competition winner who is a big fan of Noel's heroes and of Noel himself. However, upon arriving at the Neville's house on Sword Terrace, the team discovered that the front door was wide open. The hallway and the living room were in disarray, and damp patches all over the house suggested there'd been a water leak. Further to an investigation, all four Neville's, Dad Ian... Mum Angie, grown-up sister Lucy, and Marcus were all missing. Our TV crew decided to look around the house for clues as to where the family where, whereabouts were and talking to two sets of neighbours, the Taylors and the Higsons. Killian found a rather in ominous drawing, presumably by Marcus, which showed Marcus to be a, next to stood next to a well, a child that looks similar to himself, except drawn much darker, almost a black void. Uh, Sandy had a wonderful time talking to Alan Taylor, the pharmacist. Mm. Uh, but then, handsome, handsome pharmacist. Mm. Handsome pharmacist, my bad. Uh, but when, uh, to return to get more information, his sister seemed to put Sandy off, telling okay. her that the river 
was dangerous or the water was dangerous and she should look out for themselves. See, I think I missed that it was a sister because Sandy was definitely thinking wife. And uh, I'm overjoyed to hear that it's a sister. Uh, <laughs> do, do go on. I will. I will indeed. Uh, Heather and Killian uh, needed desperately a replacement child for Noel, so it sort of enlisted the help of the Higsons, uh, their daughter, Becky Higson, who sort of revealed that Marcus had, or was, her friend, but had been very withdrawn since uh, moving to school and being bullied, uh, saying that all he wanted to do was have fun and play with friends. And eventually uh, saying that he'd found a friend in the woods and that he was going to join them and have playtime forever. A segment happened where Noel got, uh, let's say, a, a pie in the face by one Colin, who had unceremoniously been put into the Lord Peter outfit, uh, with Colin himself feeling the effects of being very sweaty in an enclosed space. Noel went off to wash his face, but after some time when our team were deciding what to do, they realised Noel was also missing. Um, the sort of uh, uh, Father Higston, whose name I cannot remember off for the life of me just now, uh, pointed out that uh, Noel had just simply washed his face and walked into the woods. Yeah. Finally, finally, Sandy has spotted uh, footprints going down, going uh, out of the household, the, uh, the Neville household, and going straight into the woods, noticing that it was small and also there's a little bit of blood. Mm. And so the team have gone into the woods. Now, we are in what is like what I like to call in between scenes just now. So there's no challenges as such, but I would like to know for the first hour or so as you're tracking through the woods of Solemn Vale, what are you doing? What's what's going on with you? Handing it over to you. Okay. <laughs> so, so Colin is uh, essentially well, I, I, he he is singing uh, to himself. Glen Cowboy is rhinestone cowboy, um, <laughs> and uh, probably play that funky music by Wild Cherry. Mm -hmm. uh, he will be singing this under his breath continuously, <laughs> occasionally offering wine gums that are mostly just a solid sugary ball at this mm -hmm. point, yeah. and yeah. Uh, looking to Killian to see what Killian is doing, and mm -hmm. occasionally just just agreeing completely. <laughs> Even if there's no question. Just Even like, if there's no question, it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Sometimes just repeating the last three words that Killian says <laughs> in, a re in a way that's definitely not annoying. I feel like um, Killian is uh, having a bit of a mix between complaining about how muddy his nice shoes are getting. Nice no shoes are getting. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Colin? Colin? Hmm? Uh, Do you understand yeah. me, Colin? Yeah, yeah. And uh, also <laughs> complaining to, uh, or throwing ideas at Heather about how uh, if we don't find Noel, are there ways that we could get out of this? Like, <laughs> if he's gone, and I'm not saying he is gone, but if he is gone, would we say he's gone off on some sort of safari or something? I don't know, you know, what these actors do, they, they, they it's run away to retreats. Oh, oh, he could be a druggie. <laughs> we had him, oh, there you go, Heather, we had him committed because uh. he threatened the child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about that? Does that work? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I think Heather, <laughs> I think Heather <laughs> is... Heather is slowly coming to terms with the fact that a child might die, mm -hmm. which is for a producer. <laughs> no, no bueno, I believe. Is the, yeah. Who did who did do the health and safety report mm -hmm. for the shoot? Yeah. It isn't <laughs> ideal. No. Um, and also just kind of like, I think the, the sort of... Um, the reality of the situation on a on a legitimate moral ground has sort of sunk in a little bit. Mm. Uh, I and it's 
probably just every time Killian is like, so could we, could we, <laughs> no, could we have him sent to prison on false charges, right? He's going to have a foggy memory and and it's like, I, 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 I don't know, Killian, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Just flipping flip pages over on a on a clipboard and flipping them back and flipping them out, flipping them back. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, S- Sandy is actually keeping a fucking eye out for anyone be in these woods. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if there's a trail to follow, try to follow it. Uh, yeah. Um, and becoming in, sort of increasingly irritated by mm-hmm. all of the bickering. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm doing sort of constant survival slash tracking checks, I guess, is Absolutely. my, my yeah. way forward. I appreciate but, I don't know. The police are here, so that's Yeah, I know. I was going to say, they've come to get me. Oh, I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, wow. the street. <laughs> I was a bit like, wow. I, I thought that was like some atmospheric thing that no. there was like police yeah. showing up to the town. Uh, it's just the, no. a police car careens <laughs> through the woods. Yeah. <laughs> See, I actually had quite a scary bird in my ceiling about five minutes ago, and I was like, I'm hoping this is just adding to the atmosphere. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yes, unfortunately, Solomon Vale's police force were being informed by the Higson dad. He yes. said, it, remember, so... And they seemed quite relaxed about... Uh, not, not not necessarily. He seemed definitely like, okay, I'll, I'll we'll do stuff whilst you continue along. But um, alerting the authorities seems to be quite a hard thing to do in such a dozy little village. Yeah. Um, but, yes... You continue like following uh, Sandy, I assume, at the front, uh, yeah. looking to see, you know, maybe bits of broken bracken, perhaps, uh, with the other three bickering behind you. And you go about 30, 45 minutes or so, and we're going to move into scene two, <laughs> the woods. So I would like one of you, I'm going to assume it's going to be Sandy, to do a suit check mm-hmm. so that is uh that it comes from your body if you wish sure. to use any points the challenge rating is four now mm-hmm. all of you can be involved in this check but sandy is the one that has to roll so if people want to spend body uh, to help sandy they can there's also five points of weird up for grabs if you want okay. to use it in, in this scene you know um, I think I have the highest body score in the group, so... I'm, um, I'm happy to add one, to I know, just in I case. know you are. I know you are, Colin. <laughs> yeah. um, will that body kill you? If you say, how, how much body no, do you no, have, Colin? I'm, I've, got, I've got four body. I've got, I've got body to spare. Uh, I think maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely spend a body. Okay. Well, is so, that two? Is that two, two, then? That's two, right. currently, yes. I mean, extra... To, I mean, so that's plus two to this roll. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a four. With, that's probably challenge racing four. Yeah, that feels that feels good. Plus two on a d six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not going to fuck that up. How could you? I'm How not could gonna, you? Look, exactly look, 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 I mean, I just uh, I just have to not roll a one, How right? I just have to not roll a one. I just got to not roll a one. Just gotta not roll it, a one. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this d six and I'm not gonna roll a one. Exactly, guys. <laughs> Oh, right, I rolled a five, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We're so healthy, that's a seven. <laughs> so, you continue tracking. Uh, Sandy, you're actually quite good. At points, you think, you sort of look around and it feels like the forest, the woods around you almost sort of move in on you. Like I said before, when you were getting in, the... the trunks of these trees were fairly close by uh, they sort of even in and out sometimes you are like squeezing in between uh, trees to find more trees and more and as you look up uh, you can't see the sky you can only see the canopy and the leaves the light still shining through it um, there is a, a heat that you all feel a sort of hot it's autumn but it is hot you know the sort the, the, the heat is sort of kept bouncing back and forth with the canopy uh there is birds there is like insects and stuff but you don't get lost Hmm. as you continue you take a moment maybe about 
an hour in, you're still following a trail. You know, even for times when you're sort of looking around, you're like, oh, God, where are we? Suddenly you'll see, like, a branch that's definitely been snapped. Um, the footprints themselves have long since dried up, but there's definitely now from wet footprints to muddy footprints. And as you look, there's not just one set. There's several. Mm. Like a rhinestone cowboy. This this could mean that people have, have done have had started a search party, and they've they've all gotten together and they're all looking for or found Marcus. So that that would be good. This means there's more people, right? That's 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 a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. 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 I've got I've got to be honest. I mean, maybe it's just because they're country folk, but I've not had the best um vibe from anyone we've met so far. No, no, neither have like I, who? to be fair. Oh, well, the little girl was a bit strange. Her dad was a bit odd and no, Noel's clearly freaked out. So you know, think Alan's are... nice. Al- Alan was Alan was very nice. But, Alan was um, nice and that, handsome. Um, yeah, where is Alan? Well, back at his house, I assume. But <laughs> didn't didn't want to. You didn't want to go and try and get. I know. Well, I did. To help. There was this other woman there who I, I can only hope is a sister. Um, and uh, she was not friendly. I just that was okay, when I wanted enough. to use the phone, and she just more or less just slam the door in my face so um, okay yeah that's 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 not nice no. okay in which case mr killian you're absolutely correct <laughs> what did killian, folks, sorry, what did killian say <laughs> about uh, not being nice people right. also none of them really seemed enormously worried that a whole family including children had gone missing i mean that's for me we can flag that, can't we? I mean, we've been saying sort of, yeah. oh, small, small town people and what uh, small town life, but that's that's not, that's just not okay anywhere, right? Well, 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 exactly. Like I didn't care about the child, but I don't live here. They do. I, hmm. I don't know if I should raise my hand if I've got a question. No, Col- oh, Colin, you can Colin. just talk, God Colin. It's- okay, um, missing children is bad. Yes. Are bad. No, no, no. Is 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 bad. Is bad. Is bad. Yeah, children missing aren't children themselves is bad, bad because they're missing. Mm-hmm. It's bad that they are missing. It's bad that they are missing. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's all right. It's okay. You're getting well, it. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah. Becky seemed to think Marcus was bad, and just throwing that out there. It's a child, Killian. Well, I'm just saying they clearly weren't getting on. It's uh, all mean. They're all nasty. They all have freaky, weird dreams and imaginary friends and they say horrible things to each other but that we they're still kids they still we still have to try right i've got an imaginary friend it's all good what no I'm what well i mean my mum would say i blame the parents but that's a whole separate thing colin you have an imaginary friend <laughs> well not anymore well I, I assume well i probably do i imagine i do uh, so yeah i do Okay. Well, look, that's I hate fine. This. That's I great. Hate this. That's, you know what? That's <laughs> what? no, it's fine. Hey, what's um, wrong with having an like because there's someone who's always there that you can kind of rely on? It's it's mm. okay. Mm. Right? Well, you're um, an adult, man. I mean, I okay. It's, it's you should have every real breath of me, Kirk Gladwin's real... being, to not just be like, but Colin, you're 37. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was suppressing the exact same. Yeah. <laughs> and Reese being 37 is like, that seems fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, no, no. It's just like because if you have someone who you can rely on, and and like, so you're not scared about going into some terrifying woods or chasing some people who seem to be congregating. Does um does your imaginary friend ever sort of tell you to do things, Colin? No, mostly mostly he just sings, rhinestone cowboy. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I think that's fine. Um, Colin. I think, 
you don't need an imaginary friend, mate. We are all your friends. <laughs> I know that. I know that. Like, I hate you. I, I know. I hate you. I know we're all friends. I just I hate I, you. I, like. I mean, I mean, no, no one, no one else sings "Rhinestone Cowboy" though. So it's like, it's just. It's fine. I just, I mean, one, I don't, I don't know it, and two, we're, you know, trying to find a lost child in a wood. <laughs> yeah, so I, sorry, you know? yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. Which way should we go, Mister Killian? As you ask, <laughs> <laughs> there is a snap of a twig, roughly about thirty feet, feet ahead of you, and now you all sort of are quiet a bit. You can hear some gentle rustling. Oh, that's rustling's a bit gentle. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to fight every instinct that you have. Okay. And um, be quiet. Sandy is like really slowly reaching down towards like her hip, yep. towards a very sharp pair of scissors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Killian's going to see if there's like a big stick to grab. Oh, plenty. Mm. <laughs> you grab one, to, mm. Yes, mm. and then he's going mm. to hand it to Colin. Okay. <laughs> Protect me. <laughs> you know what to do, Colin. I trust you. <laughs> uh. Yes? <laughs> Be- Be- was it Becky? The rustling that- stops. Oh. Is that, is that you? Do you want to come out? Little Marcus? Not Big Marcus, who's, who's here. We're all friends. We're all good friends. You can hear from the same direction lots of Hushed whispering. Is that <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're so naughty. <laughs> All right. I've had enough of this. Yeah. Ellen's going to stri- just stride straight over. <laughs> I'm sick of this. Yeah. Right. I'm not. I'm sick of this. I'm sorting this out right now. I'm getting to the bottom of this right now. Okay. So you, yeah, you. So you're going up. Uh, is anyone going with Heather? Yeah, we'll we'll immediately like. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I, I want the moment where Colin, you know, immediately goes after Heather. I go after Colin, and then Killian is left on his own. <laughs> and has that moment of like, I don't want to go towards the scary thing, but I also don't want to be on my own. <laughs> when he's forced Killian, to follow us. <laughs> yeah, he'll take a beat, pick up a rock, and then follow you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you approach uh, Heather. I also you are approaching this almost like a. Uh, it feels like a big bushel, essentially. And uh, it's shaking ever so slightly, but you can hear like as you get closer, there is definitely more hush whispers and those like, stop it, stop it, no, we'll get caught. <laughs> yeah, right. I've had enough of this. Um, this has all been a, a very fun game, but a lot of people are very worried about where you all are. So we're we're coming out now, aren't we? You hear Heather, the sounds of an embrace. happening behind the bushel right uh excuse me uh, um i'm an adult i would like <laughs> any people in the bush kids or adults or whatever to please step out we we well, we had enough now the game's are uh, over all right, I need uh, uh, the whole team, but I think Heather's going to roll for this. If that's right, it's a pressure check, <laughs> challenge five. Is that, so I roll a one. I roll one d six. Yeah, one d six. But you can spend points from your mind yeah. currently, and it's a group check, so people can also spend points from the mind well, if they would like you, to. You gave Sorry. me a, you gave me a body, so I'll give you a mind. I'll give Cheers, you one mate. mind as well. I'll I'll keep my mind to myself. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a pressure check of five. So you currently got a plus two to this roll. How do you yeah. feel about a plus two, James? 
Oh, that's fine. That's totally fine. I could I'm probably sure spare you one more. I mean, there, there's, sure also be fine. there's also weird. There's also weird. I'm sure it'll be fine. Should we, are you What's sure? Because five is kind of high. Should we Should we dunk a, a so weird into here's this? So here's the thing. So the weird, you can get it. If you want to have it a plus one, you do it after you roll. Oh, great. Yes, you did but say that. you can yeah. also, but here's the thing. You can also spend a point of weird. Anyone can take the point of weird and spend points from a different ability, but you have to justify why it's that ability and not mind. It's a, it's a 50 with plus two it's a 50 50 shot Oops. right mm-hmm. and you know what's the worst that can happen oh credits roll <laughs> <laughs> go for it for that it up. is a that is a natural six whoa yes. critical Beautiful. six well yeah. nice <laughs> well no fantastic uh Heather you've dealt with wayward actors you've dealt with inept directors you're probably dealing with one right now you are used to herding cats through hr whilst it's on fire you're not gonna let anything stop you at this point and with your sort of gruff disposition and telling that you're you're an adult come out there's a quiet moment and they're like oh shit, shit. <laughs> johnny johnny pass me pass me pass me that <laughs> and after a few moments, the bottle parts, and a young couple comes out. You can see there's a, there's a gentleman and a lady, uh, not wearing many clothes. They look like they're in a state of undress, right. uh, desperately trying to like put stuff on. Uh, look to be both in their early twenties, um, uh, both a little bit red in the face, and like, oh, sorry. Um, I'd give it a couple of minutes if I were you. Sorry, we made a little bit of a mess in there. Okay. <laughs> Stop it, Johnny. That's right. Hi. I'm, I'm, so, I, just, I reach across and just gently lower Colin's stick. <laughs> yeah. There we yeah. go. Okay, good. So, there's a missing, there's a missing child. Um, in these woods, um, we are concerned about their safety. Um, if you wouldn't, have you seen anyone go by or heard anyone go by, adult or child? And uh, would you mind? Helping us look for this miss it. It's a it's it's quite a serious situation. Um, we're, the whole- we're not from around here, so it would be really helpful to have maybe some people who knew these. We obviously know these woods quite well, um, <laughs> so it would be really helpful to yeah. to have a you know a, 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 just some, some some locals help out. Yeah. Everyone else has been pretty unhelpful so far, to be honest. Um, There's also a man with fabulous hair. If you've seen him, uh, the more important one. The uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, gen- the the man who's sort of been named as Sir Johnny is putting back on his jeans. It's like, <laughs> sorry, yeah, we were. Well, the mood took us a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what, m- what mood? Colin. Oh. Man. <laughs> Colin, buddy, it's fine. Look, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Just we we could just use some. We could just use the help. Sure. No, sorry. Uh, we. Uh, uh, Helen. Helen. Are you? Are you some sort of film? Are you some sort of... No, you're not one of those dodgy film companies that sort of film couples having it off in the woods, are you? No, we're with the, B- we're with the BBC. I'd have some, uh, I'd have some money people- off that you doing that. No, we're not. Oh, we're not. Fair enough, um, fair enough. Do people get paid for that? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Plus, who'd want yeah. to watch you? Oh, well, <laughs> I think you'll find we have been a bit uh, adventurous. <laughs> Hannah, okay, sure, Hannah, the lady sure. That- yeah. I- you know, yeah. so funny, so just, Johnny. <laughs> just missing kid, just missing kid thing is it's it's quite it's a it's a pretty high priority is the thing. Oh, yeah. man. we've not we've not seen anyone. Okay, have great. We? And 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 both of them are just sort of looking at each other. Then <laughs> no, no, we've um sorry, we've we sort of skipped out a little bit. There's um I don't know if you know there's a, a commune that's a little bit further away. The guiding star. Yeah, we came for a quick visit. We stayed for a few days and stuff, and. Uh, Oh, we took each other's eyes, didn't we? Like, oh, such a sweetheart. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, um, is... And and whereabouts is is that? If you oh. were to point us in a in a direction, <laughs> I don't know. It's all the trees look the same. <laughs> just, got... just to be clear, is this some sort of like sex commune? Because if so, Colin really shouldn't go. Oh, I am Colin. <laughs> Oh, hi, Colin. <laughs> hi, hi. No, 
know, it's it's not. It's I, obviously people think communes are all about sex. No, no, no. This is one's artist. You know, uh, Lord Lauren. He's he's got it all together. He just said said we need to embrace our uh, our passions and our. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were doing that behind the bush. <laughs> um, um, so what, what, kind of, what kind of size pupils on these people are we talking? Oh, big. <laughs> big. Okay, yeah. I think there's a little Sandy's just going to kind of lean over to, to Heather if Heather hasn't already noticed, which given that she's used to herding actors, she almost certainly has. Um, and she'd be like, yeah, um, I'm high as fuck. Yeah, they're not going to help, are they? Want, I don't think we want them coming uh, with us at all. Also... <laughs> I might stab one of them if we do, if they do come with us. So, what, you... kind of, what kind of art do you do? Oh, Colin. we make art for our bodies. Colin. <laughs> You're like, so funny. Colin, please. Watercolors? Oh, Buddy. all sorts Colin. of paints. Colin, huh. when we get back to London, I'll take you to a few clubs and it'll help explain a few things, but we'll deal with that later when we're safe and this... Can we say found or whatever? Are you okay. found or whatever? Are you here for the for the river spirits? <laughs> Sorry, <gasps> they uh. Well, we got told at the commune that the the river, when it swells, it's uh, it makes for the best sort of experiences. So we thought we'd come try it out. Right, so the... so it is a sex commune then. <laughs> so it is that. It is it is one of those. Oh, you caught me. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um. <laughs> Have a nice afternoon. Mm-hmm. We're going to go and find the missing children, the children that are missing. Oh, the local so children from around here who are missing, oh. probably in danger. Yeah, okay. Um, and then as I'm as I'm sort of leaving, uh, I'm gonna I will sort of, as I'm sort of passing Kelly, and I'm just going to be like, you won't, don't you, you don't 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 take Colin to any of your clubs, <laughs> none of your clubs, okay. He has to learn some days. Yeah, but Andy. not like that. Not like that, Killian. Right. It's immersion therapy. Come on. I don't. Uh, um, have fun behind the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Always can, room for one more. Can I try and intimidate this couple? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? You've already succeeded, so definitely. I, I just want to like they're they're intoxicated. Yeah. And I just want to freak them out yeah. so that they leave the woods. Sounds good. So, how do you? What do you say to them to do that? Right. It's very dangerous in these woods. Okay. There's a lot of scary stuff. There's people missing. You're in a lot of danger. This place, it's not safe. You have to get out. Oh. There could be people behind every tree. There could be people behind every shadow. What? Any of this could be dangers of untold comprehension and you just need to get out there's there could be things in the dirt there could be things in the bush you gotta run you gotta run uh the gentleman so the johnny comes up goes hey, hey you're killing the vibe slightly all right yeah. all right well uh... it's not a good vibe here it's a bad vibe come on come it's on, a helen. very scary bar- vibe come on helen let's uh let's go back to the back to bed <laughs> well you're gonna die then that's fine goodbye no 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 well yeah honestly you can have this part of the woods if you want obviously you know you and the director with your cameras all right <laughs> okay okay have fun with your little film i did, my, be- I did my best gag you know they- what you know what heather that was actually quite sweet what just i can't I don't want people to start getting murdered in the woods. It's just not, look, I've heard a lot of talk about uh, how this situation is going to be managed, and a lot of it is about, you know, covering up people's deaths and disappearances, so it's just nice to see you, just, you know, trying to help some people, that's all. That's all. And as you watch the sort of half-naked couple, like, desperately putting on the rest of their outfits and mis- sort of mismatching, sort of giggling at each other, like, sort of, definitely lots of touchy-feely sort of hand gestures. They sort of move off into the direction that you have come from. And because you succeeded at the check to get them to leave the forest away from danger, the isolation rule, the difficulty will go down. Oh. Hey. Noise. Mm. <laughs> so... So, yeah, Colin, Colin eyeing the dirt very suspiciously. Mm. 
and eyeing every kind of like tree slightly <laughs> suspiciously. I was trying to freak them out so they'd leave their their high. Okay. It's not real, probably. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Nothing yeah, to worry yeah, yeah, about, yeah. mate. No. We're just looking for some some kids got lost in the woods, right? Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's yeah, nothing in definitely. the woods. There's nothing in the in the dirt. Yeah, no, no. Of course, yeah, no. You're right, Heather. Sorry. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, stick up. I mean, stick up. Uh, yeah, though. stick up. <laughs> yeah, stick up still. <laughs> stick up. Stick up still. But yeah, just like internally, let simmer. Okay. Yeah. 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 We all say yes. Yeah. As we walk through the woods. Yeah. So carry on. Yeah. So the four of you, plus now a new stick, uh, comes with you um, as you go. And again, moving through the woods, you get another half an hour, 45 minutes, getting deeper and deeper into these woods, trying to follow some sort of trail. Again, you lose it for a couple of minutes at a time, but you eventually find something, whether it is like a, a maybe a little bit of blood on a tree, maybe some more snapped uh, twigs, etc., denoting something has come through. You get so to a point, though. we've been walking for like... Uh, like um, an, a good two hours, you think. Okay, so we're two, we're two hours away from where this trail of blood started and there's still blood? Yeah. So that's two hours worth of bleeding, right? I mean, is it a lot or...? Like sprinkles. Okay, 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 okay. No, I mean, it could be fine, it could be fine. Does it look like wet blood or dry blood? It now dry blood, mm-hmm. for sure. But as you're looking around, Killian... You sort of again are looking at like you know you've you, you know you sort of got used to this fact you know Sandy's probably ahead, Colin is behind you with the stick, you and Heather are probably in the middle a little bit. Um, and you're sort of like looking around. You know, maybe you're even doing like a little bit of like quick footage just to just in case you never know it might be useful at some point. And as you sort of switch, you see on one of the lower branches something hanging you see like it looks like it, it's weird because at first you think it's just part of the branch that's been snapped or something like that very thin little bit of branch that's maybe got from higher up and then has fallen down and then just sort of landed over the the bow but then you realize it's not you realize it's kind of almost been deliberately put there it's like twigs on a little bit of twine and you can see it's a stick figure. You can see there are two stick figures. And as you look around, not on every tree, but certainly on a couple of trees, it's the odd stick figure, stick man, stick person. Mm-hmm. And then your eyes sort of pan down with your camera to the trunk. And you see someone has carved something into the tree. You see almost like a a flat line indicating sort of waves. And lying down, almost like sleeping, are three stick figures. Hmm. On top of the waves, there are two much smaller stick figures. Uh, Heather, I think we've stumbled into the commune's arts and crafts area. Yeah. Yeah, this seems like commune stuff. Is that... Is that two kids? And three people beneath some waves? That that, that can't be good. I mean... Is is one of the... Are the two child-sized stick figures... Oh, sorry, were they carved? Were they carved... Into, they were carved into the wood. The the, uh, the trunk. Carved it carved into the trunk. Is one of them noticeably like darker than the other, or are they no. the same? Looks okay. the same. Okay. Are any of the ones on the branches reachable? Mm-hmm. Can they not take one? Ah. Uh, Let's get a closer uh, look at it. Do you have any weird in your pool? Uh, I haven't spent any weird, 
No, so do, you, do you have any weird... Acquired any, I guess. You, have you acquired any? No. No. I'm going to give you one. Nice. Hmm. I'm going to take one from my my little pot and you get it. So there's currently four in the uh, thing, so you've got it. And then just hmm. just for shits and giggles, could you roll it for me, Killian? And tell me what the number is. <laughs> just a D6. Just a D6? Because you've, you've only got one weird... I rolled a six. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's not good. It's not good. From experience, it's bad. It's, um, it's not good. It's, it's not, not good, good oh mate. God. I gotta be honest. Killian. <laughs> you take down this stick figure. You hold it in your hands, and as you do, you notice that it's very sticky. Horrible sort of sap. And for a moment, like, this stick figure is stuck to the palm of your hand. And as you <sighs> try to take it, it, like, ah, ah, it scrapes the skin from your palm. No damage. But you can see, like, the sap, it almost runs straight off this stick figure. It's almost, it's like weeping sap from every open and you maybe drop it and it still weeps. Ow, son of a... Who oh. put glue on a stupid figurine? What the hell? Do you want to... Um, and So Colin will dig into his little kind of yeah. big pockets and we'll pull out some plasters. Like lots of small plasters we'll, but we'll try and cover... I, w- I want you to describe bit. what kind of children's band-aids you're putting on, <laughs> Killian. There's going to there's gonna be cartoons on here, I know. It's a collection of zoo animals. Damn straight it is. you've got... <laughs> Lions yeah. and tigers yeah. and giraffes yeah. and a hippopotamus and the wow. hippopotamus is just has a little like kind of graze on its bum and it's looking over and going, ow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Colin, 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 Colin. Okay, just, just hold you your hand open. Okay, you, know what, you know there what you I like the ones with the lions? Yeah. Why are you putting the other ones on? <laughs> I, can put the li- <laughs> I can put the lions over the top. They'll, they'll, they'll go on the top like, so that okay. you can just see the... the okay. Okay. I'll have a producer's health and safety kit with actual plasters in it. <laughs> It'd just be like, oh, yeah. I'd just kind of like, just sort of touch touch Heather on the arm and just be like, let them have this. <laughs> <laughs> so Lion will give him inner strength. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something. I don't know. There we go. Now, Colin, pick up that little figure. I want to see it. Okay. Don't. Colin, Colin, I do not slap that. Collins. Colin. I fully smack <laughs> Colin's hand. With, with, yeah, just as he reaches out but, for it. No, because he picked it up and it hurt him and it's there is sap coming out of it. It's very small. There shouldn't be sap coming out of it. That's... I get a stick. Is yeah. there a... Is, is, want, is this the kind of stick, stick figure that could be... You could you could lift... Absolutely, up, yeah. Right, there's, like in, there's a space to do something with. Yeah, so I, I get stick. a stick and I, yeah. I get it and I lift it up. Yep. I hold it up so we can get a look at it without touching it. Okay, okay you sort of, yeah, maybe you get through this sort of little uh, loop on it uh, from the top of course, of it, yeah. And you hock a duck, essentially. Mm-hmm. You hold it up. The stick doesn't have any sap on it. None whatsoever. Mm. And as you look down at the ground, there's no sap at all. Well, uh, Killing, you said it was covered in sap? Well... Yeah, look at my hand. It's ruined. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, at, look at this hand look. wrapped in child's glasses. <laughs> I, I don't. I. Yeah, this is just weird. This is just distractingly yeah, weird. No, yeah, I just Let's don't see go. how this helps us find a kid. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right, Heather. You're right. I'm sorry. The, I'm getting distracted by the this stuff. All the people. It's 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 clearly. It's three at the bottom, it's the river, it's two on the top, the two are smaller. This sure. is about its perspective. It's triangular. This is art. This is art people stuff. This is okay. exactly the kind of art people stuff so that you, I am frankly sick of today. So, so you don't think we should go to the commune then? Because I don't really know where else to go. We can go to the commune. We can go to the commune. But just, it doesn't, this, this, this stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. So, I have okay. to ask, how how long are we committed to this whole trying to find them things? We're two hours into the woods here, and we are almost lost, I think. 
But Noel's still missing. Yeah, we, we, we not, yeah, Noel is missing also. Children are missing. Killing, if you want to walk back, you can go right ahead and walk back. <laughs> it's two hours that want... way, and I turn around and point the way we came. Oh, no, clearly I don't want to walk back by myself. That's ridiculous. That's how right. people die in woods. I'll fall and land in a ravine or something. I'm too rich to die in the woods. No one's going to die how this in the woods. Goes. Well, you tell that to the weird, creepy stage figures. It's just commune stuff, all right? And you've cut your hand on this. You shouldn't have tried to take it down anyway. Um, but also, there, apparently there's room for one more at the commune, so we, we could probably no, ask... There's it. room for one more in the bush, Colin. <laughs> they wanted to have a threesome, Colin. Grow up. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. 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 Yeah, what are you talking about? How old are you? <laughs> okay, okay, look. Yes. It's like he came out of a pod that age. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try not to judge him based on his own experiences or perhaps lack thereof, okay? I just, I didn't realise what that's what she meant. Yeah, I, you know what? Some yeah. people aren't great at picking up on social cues, Heather, and that's that, fine. Yeah, yeah. Can we find each other? Yes. Okay, we'll go find, <laughs> we'll go find all the children. Maybe Stick they're up, at the Colin, commune. Let's go. Stick <laughs> up, Colin. <laughs> Maybe they'll be at the commune. <laughs> oh. some, I have left some coffee at the club. Oh. <laughs> like a rhinestone cowboy. I think so far, <laughs> stick up, Colin, is the episode title for me. Um, we'll see if that holds, holds water, if you'll pardon the pun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <sighs> you continue on. And then your hand hurts, but eventually it ebbs. You know, if I anything, still you loudly complain. Oh, of course, of course. Oh, was, <laughs> you know, if anything, it's the roughness of those all the plasters. You know, creating that second skin. Mm. And it isn't long until you make it into a clearing. You see a. Uh, well, it's quite interesting. Um, you sort of, as you sort of all go into this clearing, your eyes have adjust. It's, there's a, a moment when you see Noel. How's his hair looking? And that's how you recognise him. He's like immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> like genuine, genuine sigh of relief. Before I've even taken in what he's doing, what doing yeah. he can be like <laughs> impaled on a spike. And <laughs> I think in this moment, Sandy's first thought would be like, okay, okay. his hair's all right. Oh God, he's dead. Um, <laughs> well, this is thing, he's not dead. He's just looking up. His, his back is to you. With again, you recognise the hair, and you see the uh, sh- the sort of uh, jumper, the, the the sort of denim jacket that says Noel's Heroes and big sparkly Demontes. And he's looking up at something, and all four of you see it. Strung up, like by a rope, is the carcass of a deer mm. that has been cut. You can see that blood has been let out of it, draining mm. onto the floor. I'm no woodsman, but that doesn't seem quite right to me. <sighs> Might be unhygienic. Noel, you Definitely. silly bastard. And I... Yeah, it turns around. <laughs> it turns around. It is Noel. <laughs> I'm not going to frighten you like, it's not Noel. And Noel goes, <gasps> guys, um, hey, 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 sorry. I... How, did you, how did you get here? I was like, I, I just... We walked... What the uh, fuck are you doing in the woods? I, well, I, I thought, well, I had a bit of a thought after washing my face, and uh, I thought, well, I, I at least have a try and find the kid. You know, it would be oh, ashamed cool. to leave without saying goodbye. On, on your I, own? Who you said you're allowed to think? You left us without saying goodbye. Well, I, I thought I'd literally be like a moment or two, and then these woods, man, it's just like... They're, they're wild. They seem to like change. And like at one point, it's I thought there was like an hours. arch, and then I walked through, and then it closed up behind me. It was Noel. Has anyone offered you a threesome? 
to, what? today, Noel, today, not oh, generally, oh, oh, but oh, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, what have you... Where have you guys been? <laughs> oh, no, just because there were some people in the woods who did. And oh. It's like, cause I, if that's like a regular thing, is that does that happen a lot in uh, the woods? Depends on which woods you go to, I think. Uh, like, I mean, yeah. these, these woods. Yeah. Oh, the, I've this not is been largely, largely irrelevant, isn't it? Um, okay. No, so what, what, what have you, you I'm, I take it, given that there are no children with you, that you haven't no, found anybody? I'm, sadly, no. I uh, I was just, like, walking for, like, ages. It's been really hot here. I don't know if you guys mm. found it as well. We just, yeah. And then I just stumbled upon here, and I just thought, oh, my God. How are, how are Noel's pupils? Uh, Noel's pupils look normal. Okay, good. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just looked up and, like... I was like, "Oh my god, as, as a deer!" I thought it was trapped or something, and then I realised it's it's already dead. It's quite quite a quite a piece, huh? M- yeah, there's, a, there's a there's a commune here apparently. Um, so oh. I'm assuming this is some weird shit that they've done. No, no. If you look, um, it's like it looks like a like a, like it got trapped or something, or has been strung up here like in deliberately. The tree. Yes. It got trapped in the tree. Well, I, I, I don't was, know. I don't know how trapping works. You know, maybe there's hunters here or something. I don't well, know. It could be a, it could be a snare. To, to be fair, Heather, I'm sure that. I mean, I'm not an expert, but I think yeah. you can rig a rope up in such a way as when something interacts with it. I mean, it's happened pretty impressive. And, and it like pulled up like a whole deer. Like you know, whew, I wouldn't like to get caught in that myself. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, how long have you been walking in the woods? Oh, like ten minutes or something. No, we've been looking. No, it's been like three hours. Yeah. What? No, 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 no. I, I literally was just going to come in, see if I could, like, I called out. I was like, oh, hey, Marcus. No. Hey, little kid. Look at my watch. Oh. It has been three hours. Oh, heck, you've been... Damn. I just... The I'm health not, and safety sheet. I, no, uh, the stick with yeah, a buddy. I, sorry, 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 Heather. I would never rip them. I just... I, I, yeah. Do you need another buddy, Mr. Kelly? Like, I'm happy to be a buddy. Oh, Colin, of course. Of course, I'm always up for buddies. You know, I'd, I'm sorry I frightened you all. I didn't... That was not my intention. I just wanted to find the kid. We're, look, we're just... We are just glad that you are safe. And at that... I think. At that moment. Oh. There is almost a... And behind Noel, a tree explodes... Like, it doesn't, like, fall over anything, but pff, as a bullet hits it. Uh, Colin immediately kind of dives and tackles Noel. Yeah, get down Mr. Buddy. President style, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah easily enough. Of, here is a moment where there's, like, a contested check, right, where <laughs> Colin dives at Noel, and then as Colin is diving at Noel, Sandy hits Colin in the side and just drives him to the ground, with, you know? Like... And if you want me to roll on that, I will. I'm not going to let you roll on that. I think, I think that's a beautiful narrative. I'm like, that, yeah. like Colin's ready, and, but is it just a little bit too nope. slow? And is already on it. So, yeah, so Noel is still standing. What are uh, Buddy. <laughs> yeah. And then I think while I'm, it's just like, get down, Noel, you idiot. No. Yeah. What about uh, Helen and Marcus? What are you guys doing? Helen's going to make Killian hit the deck. Yeah. <laughs> Killian was already dropping to the ground, so you just can't yeah. collide with him. <laughs> yeah, the, the sound, the echo sound of the gunshot, like, reverberates around this uh, this little clearing. Um, the, the tree itself, like, the heavy impact of the bullets, it's up smoking ever so slightly. And you hear a... Shit! Sorry! Sorry, I thought... Hello? Bloody hell... Hi. Oh, is this allowed? <laughs> is this legal? Uh, you what? Do you I'm, have a fucking permit? I'm gonna take uh, uh, um, Colin's stick. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna very angrily move in the direction of this voice with a yeah, stick. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so aggressively, one one yeah, can say. Yeah, I know. I hear you. I hear you. So, <laughs> this you okay, buddy? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm bullet for you, no. Noel. Noel. Noel's like, no, no, it's like, uh, oh, oh, cool. Th- thanks, thanks for trying. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, Sandy, I yes. think you're gonna roll for this. Um, okay. It's either 
a pressure or a threat. Now, let me tell you, pressure has a challenge rating of six. Mm -hmm. A threat is a challenge rating of five. Pressure is related to your mind. Yeah. Threat is related to your body. It can't be body. Body. Um, it's a group check. So if anyone wants to spend stuff on it uh, with body, you can do so. Okay. Um, oh, did you say, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, five for mind, six for body? Uh, it's uh, six for mind, okay. five for body. So if you were going to spend those points, you you're definitely going to go for definitely going to go for body. Okay, so that's that would be fair. So are you spend anything on it? I'm I'm going to spend a point on this for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and if no one else wants to throw in, which I fully get, uh, I will I'll grab a point from the weird pool. Three bodies. That's fine. Uh, so you, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll throw one in uh, of body. Yeah. All right. I'll throw a body in as well. Oof. Plus three. You were all very kind. Yeah. Okay, so all five right. or over. Plus three for a five. Yeah. All right. uh, uh, that's a two, so four Ooh, total. Five, five. five total, just... Just scraping by. Uh, you sort of go... Uh, what do you do, Sandy, as you go up? Uh, I think I'm just... Like, what the fuck do you think you're doing firing at people in a wood? Sorry, but I, I thought it was a bird. I thought, I thought it was we a bird. were fucking birds, yeah. talking birds. What? No, I thought you were like, like several large bipedal talking <laughs> fucking birds. Sorry, sorry. If this person has a visible gun, I will attempt to knock it out of their hands uh, with the stick. As you sort of round one of the trees, you do see uh, a gentleman who slightly wide set, uh, very traditional countryside garb, so like big Wellingtons, uh, proper like like those sort of like uh, waterproofs, etc. Big sort of flat cat and a big uh, sh like sort of a big hunting rifle, and so yeah, easily enough with that threat, you just you hit it and he goes, oh oh shit, what? Sorry, sorry, love, I didn't see you there. I, sorry, I love, okay, because you are next. Whoa. Because <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay, God, God. Sorry, do it. Are you part? Were you from the village? Are you from the commune? Uh, n no, no, we're not. We're looking right. for uh, uh, some missing children out here. Some local children missing. Uh, have you seen anyone? Um. Although no, I suppose if you had done, you'd have fucking shot them, wouldn't no, you? No, no, no. Uh, sorry, did you, you? Your friend and points to Heather, who's on the ground. So, sorry, did they? Were, should we be asking about licenses? And stuff. Look, I'm I'm here. Uh, you know, I I'm just I'm just doing a little bit of just, just just doing my bit for the land. You know, I'm just 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 trying. Yeah. Is it illegal? For, is it illegal firearm? Uh, who, who are you with? Who are you with? I am BBC. with the BBC. <laughs> We're with Noel's Heroes. We're with the government. Killian. <laughs> Killian. <laughs> yes, Sandy. Uh, this might make a lovely scene, Killian. Camera, oh. maybe. I've got uh, fucking bye. paperwork, mate. No, no, no. I, I, you, no, no, you, you, no, 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 no cameras. No, 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 no. I'm not supposed to. I, you know. Uh, and he's gonna turn and run. Great. Um, we have yeah? a, we have a gun now. <laughs> I was say, can I pick up his gun? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Grab his gun. Easily enough, you grab his gun. Uh, are you doing anything to pursue him? Colin's gonna run after him. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hundred percent. I kneel. I'm like, okay. I kneel down to pick up his gun, yeah. and as he does, Colin's just like, boom. Oh, oh, like, oh, no, not quick enough. Stop him. him. <laughs> All right, Colin. Yeah, you're running after him. So this is you're pursuing this person. I need you to do me a pursuit check. The challenge rating is six. Uh, challenge values. It, you can you can spell it. Uh, so it's a body check. You've got four points in the weird pool. You can you use? Uh, you to... um, can we, yeah. are we can we throw in multiple points? Not for this one, unfortunately. Okay, so he's, run, he's running away. The thing you could do if you want is that you can you you could spend you could take a point from the weird pool to then be in that scene so that you get up and run after Colin if you see right. what I mean. So Colin's left your sort of area, so you're not actively helping. But if you get a point from the weird pool, you can then be in the scene with Colin. I'll, I'll take a point and run after Colin. All right, take a point of yeah, weird. Yeah, I, I don't want to crowd. I don't want to crowd that moment with other characters. So let's no let's, have, uh, let's have Heather. Pursue. All right, yeah, Heather's like come here, like comes with her. <laughs> <bits and pieces. laughs> All right, so that means that Heather could also spend... I've been chasing spend... after Colin for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> do, I need uh, to, do I need to roll? No, you don't need to roll. So it just means that you're in the scene with him, so you can give Colin some points mm. should you wish to. Cool. Uh, 
it's, uh, so it's a six, isn't it? Um, it's a, yeah, so it's a pursuit, which is a challenge rating, a challenge value of six. You can just use your body. It's, it's a body-related one. But, yeah, I'll get, I'll, yeah. But you can get a point of weird to use any of your uh, attributes. And the same goes for Heather as well, because she's now in a scene. I, th- I, say, I say use those points, guys. Like, why not? We can't yeah. take them with I'll, us. I'll, we don't I'll, know when this scene is going to yeah. end. Like, let's, yeah. let's do I'll it. Take a, I'll take a weird... All right, I'll, a weird I'll, 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 roll, I'll roll, but I'll take a weird anyway, just to add I'll one take a, to yeah, this, so, most likely. Okay, at the end. Uh, Heather, are you taking one as well? A weird point? Bloody go on, then. Oh, all right. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Are you spending? So, uh, so I, what, justify what you're doing, Heather. What sort of point are you giving to uh, Colin as he's sort of running after this person? Oh, God. I'm to try and help Colin catch the person. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> words of affirmation. Well, maybe, well. maybe, maybe like, I little... a stone at the back of his head. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Could do. Uh-huh. You could also could use just... your if you're if you're using your words. You're like, oh, we're part of the BBC. We've got you on tape. You could be using yeah, that, and that yeah, could be a point from your like mind a... instead, or yeah. your soul, perhaps. If you're being probably really like, like... A do not run, a do not, do not run. We are with the BBC. This is you are running from a scene of having fired a weapon. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah. So you, instead of using your body, you could spend a point of yeah, mind yeah. to yeah, to yeah, basically yeah, exactly. do that. So currently. I think that's a plus one. Uh, and if you're going to use that weird column, you can add it afterwards after you've done the roll. Okay. So, if okay. you want to. <laughs> yeah, oh, weird weird Collins, what they used to call them at school. <laughs> that is. Yeah, I'll, I'll I mean, I, into adulthood. Um, <laughs> so I've got one from weird, one from my body, yep. one from yours. Uh, the from Heather's mind. mind. Yeah, mind from yeah. Heather's, so from Heather's mind. So that is a grand total of seeing as I rolled a two, that's a five. <gasps> Ooh, Colin. Well, Colin. Colin, there's still one point in the weird pool, so if you want to take another point, take yeah, plus one. Take it. Do I'll it. take that weird. Do yeah. it. I'll take that weird. You and me, buddy, are three weirds. You and We're me. We're going to be so fucking weird. <laughs> you and me, pal. <laughs> it's getting so weird. It's We're so three weird, wide. man. You and me. We go down together. Yeah. You've, you've, you've run, you've both run into another world. Um, <laughs> so quick. Um, yeah, they, they just, you, you, is a moment where you think you lose them, Colin. You, you, you know, you, you, like, because they're obviously the, the sort of, um, the sort of, uh, the waterproofs, the hats, like, oh, it's all the same colors of trees around, and you're just like bursting through, and you could just hear Helen, uh, Helen, Heather shouting, like, come back here, we have you on tape, you, yeah. all that, all the stuff and like that. Colin will be shouting, you upset Sandy! <laughs> oh. <Brilliant>. Um, <laughs> oh, you hear it off in the distance, and you're like, there, Colin! <laughs> and you, Suddenly, out of nowhere, you just see this person is in front of you, like almost trying to maybe double back slightly, and has just misjudged it entirely. And you careen into this person, and you are prone on top of him, just as though you were going to try and be prone on Noel. Bam. And uh, whoa, 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 whoa! All right, all right, all right, all right. Oof. Why did you upset Sandy? No, no, no. I, sorry, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't I, sorry, I don't. I'm, I'm really bad with women. It's just terrible. Look, I, I just, <laughs> what are you doing out here? I'm oh. always I'm always shooting at women by accident. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad with it them. Is. Oh, I was, I'm I was, such a klutz. I was just, I was just hunting, all right. I was hunting. Hunting what? Deer. Obviously, deer. Look, let me up. Let me up. I, I won't. I won't go anywhere. What's your name? Gareth. I'm writing this down. Gareth <sighs> what? Podlington. Gareth what? Podlington. <laughs> Gareth Podlington. <laughs> Are you not supposed to believe that? It's, it's in the scenario, he Gareth. says. Gary Podlington. Right, Gary bloody Podlington. Right. Hi, Gareth, I'm Noel. No, sorry, I'm Colin. <laughs> Colin! Just a, a little bit of adrenaline and Colin's mind is gone. I have evolved into no idea what's it's happening. Colin has so little mind to go. <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm Colin. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, look, uh, sorry, I was... I didn't... I didn't... Uh, it's usually quite quiet at this time. I didn't, I didn't expect there to be people here. I was just... I came back for the, the carcass and I thought... I thought you were somebody else. You thought Wait. we were somebody else. You shot at us because you thought we were somebody else. Yes. Yes. I who? thought you. I f- yeah. Who did you think we were? I thought. Well, you're not. You're not part of the commune, are you? 
fucking know. Oh, thank God. Oh. We're with the BBC. Wait, what do you mean, thank God? Oh, it's just... Yeah, it's Why tricky. Sh- no, it's, it's tricky. It's just the, the Wellmans, they own everything, and I'm not supposed to be on their land after last time. So you shot at them? Well, I just wanted to scare them off and to give me a chance to run away, and then I realised it wasn't. Fire in the air! Okay. That that does seem more... Unless the bullet comes down. And th- that's not important right now, Colin. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> there are missing children. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't... We found blood. We found blood. I... Yeah, are you, you the reason that there's a deer no, in a tree? No, 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 no. I wouldn't, wouldn't touch kids. Wouldn't, wouldn't a deer, do like that. a deer in oh, the dears. tree. Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm Gareth. So it's, Hi, yes. Gareth. I'm Colin. Hi, Colin. Podlington, yes. Gareth, yes. No, I'm not Colin Podlington. No. I'm Colin Doink. <laughs> Look, I... Heather, you know me! <laughs> Look, I don't know what I've been doing. These woods are affecting us all. I've been working for a long time. Right, I, Gareth. Yes. Gareth. Yeah. Yeah. I, did you lay a trap that might hoist a deer into a tree? Yes. Yes, that's me. Okay. That's, yes. There was a deer over there. You caught one. Congratulations. Yes. You got a fucking deer. I know. I know. I, I had to go. Thank you. I was going back to get some stuff and I thought... I thought some people from the Wellman estate had come to take it, and I just thought, I'd... "Look, I'm sorry." Oops, how, so... how how well do you know these woods? I'm all right. Uh, pretty pretty okay. Could Great. you guide us to where? To the missing kids. What kids? What, what you keep asking me about these children and and, and a family? I, 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 I don't. Right, Becky. Um, oh, Chris Hickson's daughter. Becky yeah, Hickson. Becky yeah. Hickson. Yes. And and Marcus uh, Neville. Mar- uh, the, the Neville's son, yeah. What, what about him? They're in the woods. They're lost in the woods. And there's blood in the footprints. Oh. Yeah. I did think it was odd seeing the Neville's out earlier. You saw the Neville's out you earlier. Saw them. Where were well, they? Well, I, I, I saw them pass. I kind of hid because I didn't know who they were, and they were just right. walking. They How how much earlier? A couple of hours ago. I've been out okay. since sunrise. Can where? you lead us to where they might be or might have gone? Oh, they were sort of walking towards the river. It's, it's like a couple of, it's about a mile and a half that way, points to a direction. Right. You are going to help. Uh, me and my team. I know. Yes, you are, because I have your fucking name, Gareth Podlington, and um, you shot at people in the fucking woods, man. Okay, okay, okay. So you upset, you, you upset Sandy, and I don't think that's really forgivable right now because she's had a hard day. Okay. <laughs> We've all had a very fucking hard day, Gareth. It's like really like bad cop and sympathetic cop. It's just really it, this Gareth is like weirded out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you right. want a wine gum? <laughs> is this some sort of what? What the fuck is going? Look, I I'm not from the town, and I'm here trying to find these damn kids because none of you will help. But can you please help? <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I just, just can I at least just collect my deer? Because I don't want anyone heading off of it. Would you like a hand carrying it? I think I'm okay. Okay. Could you get off me, though? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so it sort of goes up. We'll switch back quickly. Obviously, you guys will return to uh, this clearing. Uh, Sandy, you have a gun. Uh, Marcus, <laughs> uh, you, Marcus oh, and Sandy, are you doing, are you doing anything particularly? Uh, I was going to go corral Noel before he wanders off into the woods again. Mm. Yeah, Noel's just sort of sat to... down. like he, Yeah, he's a bit like... It's just a breathing quite hard. He goes, gosh, man, it's so hot here, you know? Yes, no, it's very hot. You you didn't get hit by the bullet, right? You're okay. No, no, no. no. I, um, well, sort of puts a hand. Don't on touch it. Your hair's intact. Don't touch it. I think I will sort it out. Can you I, see? It feels, it feels a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, and then I think Sandy's going to come over and do her usual sort of, you know, check and all that kind of stuff, except the difference here is she has a large hunting rifle slung over one shoulder um, by the strap. Yeah. Uh, and but, but it's business as usual otherwise. Yeah. Um, Sandy, I will, Sandy, I will do I think a the side of the hair is changed. Is this damaged? Sandy, 
a little bit, a little bit. Is, yeah, there is the tiniest bit. Oh, not not noticeable, but there's definitely a bit of singeing, and you can See. smell a little bit of the. Uh, maybe if product. I'd let, maybe if I'd let Colin take him take him to the ground, this wouldn't have happened. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, that's fine. Is it Not fine? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it all good? It's all okay. fine. You just hold still, and I'll fix it. Oh, it's that's... a tiny, hmm. a little adjustment. I'll oh. just get the little burn, burn, burn ends sort of off. And oh shoot! Oh, Sandy, I'm so, I'm so, so, no, 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 it's sorry. It's no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, fine. I shouldn't have wandered off without you. You, I, I'm sorry. I yeah, just want wander off without me, and your hair gets fucking I, shot. I know. What would I do without you? <laughs> uh, well, you'd have terrible hair. Let's. I would. I would. Let's let's say that. I would. And that's would. that's enough, really, isn't it? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I, I will, I'll finish and just sort of yeah, it's, make it's, sure everything you're is... You're an expert at this. You sort of easily... Everything is perfect. Sort of, it look, yeah, hardly noticeable. If anything, you've made it like an extra curl, essentially. Mm. That's um, yeah. happening there. And the uh, Colin and Heather and Gareth Podlington uh, return to the, the, the clearing and... <laughs> Gareth, I think you have something to say to Sandy. Uh, Sandy? Um, mm-hmm. I am sorry that I said some things and I shot at the group. Um, yeah. I, I, I admit I'm from a different generation so sometimes these uh, phrases sort of come out of me and I, I would mm-hmm. it was nothing dismissive about calling you love it was more of a term of affection and I apologise that you took it to mean otherwise yeah he's from a different generation that makes him <laughs> shoot at people mm-hmm. Sandy mm-hmm. this is um, Gareth Podlington just for the legal record yeah thank you yeah. I, I did make a note I've got the camera back on <laughs> no, <laughs> it's Podlington Shot at us. I'm Killian. so I'm so glad we have found our um, NPC that we will just abuse from yes. now on. The character, <laughs> like I'm so glad we found them. I was there was a time where I thought we might not, and here they are. Here they it's are. Gareth Podlington. It's Gareth Podlington. Um, Colin has the words Gareth Podlington written on his hand. Yeah, already, just already smudged, smudged. And to John Colin. To John Colin. So, uh, Gareth, do you have a comment prepared for your attempted murder today? What? Uh, what? No, no, uh, please, no. Uh, just, look, I just, I, uh, I said I'm sorry. I just, I look. If you, if you need to find the Nevels, I, I'm sure I can like help you with some tracking. If that's what you need. Great. I, I, what? Do you know where they are? Well, yeah, uh, seen by them. the river. By oh, yeah, like, the river. Towards the river. Lead on, Gareth Podlington. I just need to get. I just need to get my, my, my. Yeah, he wants his deer. Yeah, yeah. He wants his deer, and he doesn't want a hand carrying it. Oh, no, because he's big man. I mean, he's not that big. No, he's not, Colin. He's not that big <laughs> at all. You know where it'd make it easier to carry it, Mr. Podlington, was it? If you give us all the ammo you had in your pockets, that's going to be weighing you down. I, I mean, if it, it will make you feel any better, just, 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 you know. It'll make of, me feel a lot safer if you don't have ammo on you. He sort of looks and he feels in his pocket and he sort of brings out, and he, like, uh, like a... a uh, 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 a cardboard box. You can mm-hmm. see there's like two or three bullets left. And he goes, yeah, I was almost done for the day anyway. Do so, you know the words to Rhinestone Cowboy? <laughs> Smash cut to us walking through one of the Except now, except now, better. we've got a deer. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, uh, so Gareth Podlington will join your crew. So congratulations, right. you can unlock yeah. in your inventory Gareth Podlington, Gareth Podlington. illegal poacher. Uh, uh, Gareth unlocked. Podlington on the door. Gareth Podlington. <laughs> Uh, he is carrying. Um, presumably, you don't give him back his gun. I absolutely do no. not give him his gun no. back. No, that's I'll fine. give Sandy those bullets as well. Just to, uh, yeah, great. Sure. Uh, um, I, I don't think Sandy knows how to use yeah, a do gun. You have firearm training, um, Sandy. Nope. <laughs> Killian, do you have firearm changing? Uh, well, training? Dad and Grandpapa used to take me hunting. I mean, uh, Jay. Of course they fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what what kind of what kind of hunting rifle are we are we talking here? Is this like a, a like a 
like a lever action, not lever action, a bolt action kind of. Yeah, it feels like a bolt action. Okay. It's not. It's definitely. It's not like pristine by any means. It's definitely quite well used. You think it might have been a hand me down at some point as well, um, and yeah, but it it seems to like you've seen it in action. Uh, it does seem to to work, and doesn't and the certain the mechanisms for it to shoot do work. But there's no sight or anything like that. I think. Just, I think she, she just sort of like. Yeah, she's just fiddling with it. Yeah, <laughs> hand, hand nowhere near the finger, nowhere near the trigger. No. Just trying to work out how to load it. Yeah, I, and easily enough, you sort of work it out. Click, click. Uh, yeah, and the spent cartridge pops out. The spent yep. uh, 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 yeah, cartridge pops yeah. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'll I'll bullet and then reverse that action and <laughs> click. Yeah, gun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think, gun I, think I think I worked it out. Yay. <laughs> so you so uh, to run, turn, 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 turn. So as you sort of are walking uh, through that, the Gareth is sort of like uh, you don't need to make any checks anymore to get through the woods per se because uh, Gareth is sort of taking the lead. But he's sort of like, so what? Why do you need to see this uh, this Marcus kid anyway? Because he's missing. I mean, like, you, you came because he was missing, or, or, like, were you here to see him beforehand, like? Um, we came because Noel here desperately wanted to meet him, and now I'm stuck in the woods. Oh, Brilliant uh, day all around. Uh, Noel's like, oh, well, and explains sort of the competition. He goes, oh, yeah, that attracts the kids love, love you. I've, I've seen you around. Really? What, what, have you, what have you seen me on? Oh, well, you know, um, I... I don't watch Noel's Heroes. I actually liked um I like that bit you did on uh, when you did that little bit on uh, on Crime Watch. Ah <gasps> you did it's, you saw that? It's, well, you know, it's it's you have a really nice voice. Um you really really did a really good job on that voiceover of the uh of the <gasps> murder suspects. <gasps> Thank you. I've been branching out a little Sandy. bit. I, Sandy, Sandy. What what is it, Colin? I think there is romance in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Colin? That'd be nice, I suppose. That would that would be nice. I feel like no one can do better. <laughs> you mean better than oh, his attempted yeah. murderer, or yeah, yeah, probably, probably yeah. better we can, than, we can, than we can, an we can, attempted we, murderer. I think we can afford to have higher standards, Colin. Yeah, yeah. or no, I think. or no. no, for no, <laughs> sure, like, generally. It's, is an attempted murderer a bad thing for Noel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Where um, where did you um where did you grow up, Colin? Um, it's like just on the outskirts of Reading. Okay. Okay. And and you, you were your parents from there or Yeah. Okay, and they they were around? When you were growing up, <laughs> I mean, like they, they, I mean, they did try and ditch me in a bullfight, but that's another story. <laughs> and as we move away from this, <laughs> before we'll never, we'll we'll never hear, before Sandy has the opportunity to go and tell me that story, story immediately, yeah. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> um, as you're about to sort of say that, um. Gareth stops and sort of does the sort of, sort of, uh, sort of, sort of like go that and goes points at the path ahead and all of you see this sort of scene. There seems to be on the muddy path, not only with like quite well trodden at this point, like lots of footsteps in and out, clearly quite a well used path, on a bit of a bush or a bit of a sort of a low tree, there is like a a white cloth, a white item, and then underneath you can see there are three piles of clothing. Great more nudists. Three people in a river. Wait, which means oh. there's two above? Look up. Sandy, have you figured out how to use that gun yet? I think so. Um, I know which end to point. Stick up, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make your way towards piles of clothing? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, and I think... Uh, it, it, 
going to call out for Marcus and Becky, I think, again. Okay. As you get closer, you can see that these clothing, like what was caught on the branch, seemed to be like a nightshirt of some kind. And then you see, looking coming closer, you see like a pair, like a pair of like pajama bottoms underneath the nightshirt. Uh, a nightdress with some sort of um, shorts and a slightly small but not very small set of a nighty and some shorts as well all sort of different all well worn and stuff but tracked in mud so so does that mean there's two people above you look up there doesn't seem to be anything else or the just trees. standing next to the to the river I mean I, 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 will, I will walk towards the river until I'm next to it and then look up and down and there's, see if there's no river currently oh this isn't we're not no, sorry I'm, no I'm, it's okay it's I'm, a, you're I'm jumping rivers. ahead to the next I'm scene I'm imagining rivers in my brain yes yes um, uh, no it doesn't seem there just seems to be these piles of clothing so well I mean the family left during the night right so this is this is mum dad and big sister Gareth were they wearing night clothes yeah 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 like, I recognise it like the Thin these specific ones. Well, I, I, rec- I, re- I recognized uh, Ian. I see him down at the Bowler's Arms a few times uh, a month. You know when he when he when he's finished his work and stuff. And I well recognized him, but that he was wearing. He points to the set that was slightly hanging on a, a tree branch. And then no, was, yeah, he, he wears like a well. He I saw him wear. I, think I just thought it was some sort of attire. Like I didn't think. I mean, I didn't realize they were pajamas. So that means they're in the river. Well, it means they're naked at the very least. To the We've got to help the... them. We'll run. No, Colin. <laughs> we'll run towards wherever there is water. Uh, you currently can't see any water. Can't see yeah. any water. We'll run towards a direction. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> we go together, Colin. Colin. Sorry. The buddy system, buddy system Colin. Colin. Buddy system, buddy system, buddy system. Get we'll your buddy. Where's your buddy, Colin? And we'll find, we'll look around, we'll find Noel and, and kind of like put a hand, we'll stand behind, put a hand on Noel's shoulder. Okay. Yeah, Noel's been quiet this whole time. He's like, this is, fuck, man, this is, this is, this is fucking, where yeah. are they? Do the, do the clothes look like they've just sort of been flung around or are they like? As if they've been taken off and neatly put in a pile. Oh, okay, right, okay. Yeah, the you only said something I think was in a tree? Uh, yeah, so it you looked said like, something was dangling in a tree. So. Yeah, so it was like a, a shirt. It was almost as like if it had been put on a oh, coat hook. It literally just hung in a... Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, not... It's what you noticed first and then you look down. Mm. Okay, well, maybe they came here to join the commune? Maybe this is all voluntary. Yeah, in which case, then we need to find that we need and to, we find to make sure that that is true, yeah? Th- th- because if that is the case, then maybe they don't know that their child is missing or something. I don't I don't know. Do we do we bring them their clothes or do we leave their clothes here? Noel is reaching that out to is touch. Is pickle? No. Noel is reaching out to touch one of the items of clothing. No, we don't do touchies. We don't do touchies. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, 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 buddy. Are you touching, are you touching Noel? Oh, yeah, he's had his yeah. hand on his shoulder. Had, 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 it's a muddy system. It's important. Mm-hmm. Um, he touches an item of clothing. Colin, I need you to either make a foreboding or invocation check. Those are both souls. That's uh, going to be foreboding. Foreboding, yep. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, a challenge value of seven. Oh, you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Cool on this seven. six-sided dice. Yeah. I can roll a seven. <laughs> I'll give yeah. you a soul. Use your weird to... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna oh, make you can't, dice. It's an, unfortunately, yeah. it's an individual check. Really? Individual. Oh. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, and there's cool. unfortunately yeah, okay. no points in the weird pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Well, in which case, I'm gonna... I'm gonna why the why the fuck not gonna burn three of my my oh sorry three soul. of my soul three of my soul how much do you have left oh we have oh, a lot in of my soul. soul i've got two left because i've got a lot of soul, of soul and nothing else <laughs> i got i got nothing else but look, soul look colin colin is just a little a small bag filled with an enormous amount of soul that is just desperate <laughs> to get out i'm a fucking soul pinata and <laughs> this is just a stick that is beating me until soul comes out and i rolled a five so i have got eight 
Oh, that is Thanks. weirdly stressful. Stick Thanks. up, Colin. Stick, stick up, up, Colin. Colin. <laughs> stick up. <laughs> I, I didn't realize you were so low. That's really interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, not gonna lie, Colin is low on everything. Yeah, yeah. funny that. Yeah, so, yeah. Colin, you get a moment, suddenly you're almost like, it's almost like you're seeing some sort of vision, essentially, and Noel sees it, too. Um, he sees the, the father and mother and uh, Lucy, the sort of grown-up child, uh, stood sort of in a line, this exact place, looking ahead of them, and you can see maybe about 20 feet in front of them are two Marcuses and both of them both Marcuses are saying at the same time time for bath time and slowly but surely they're getting undressed and then you're whipped back into the present I don't think it's playtime forever I think sometimes it's bath time okay uh, Gareth yeah, yeah, yeah. River, yeah. now. Okay, okay. Everyone, just b- buddy buddy up, everybody, okay? Everyone? Yep, Noel grabs you, Colin. And you make your way towards the river with Gareth. We're going to take a break. But before we do, we still have the yes. stage rules. We have so. to do the awful thing that will no. kill us. <laughs> so again, and maybe kill Colin. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll remember. <laughs> Colin's going to die. Yes, Colin's you know. going to die between scenes. Yeah. Like, we fade out Colin's of all of us leaving, <laughs> and we fade up in the next scene, and Colin's just not <laughs> there. It's a real shame. What? This is, yeah, this is off so screen. Good. Colin's contract was not renewed between series. Yeah, we had to so go back and do reshoots, and he Colin, wasn't available. Colin and... returned to his home planet. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go now. So, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> We're running over time for slightly, folks. We've, you yeah, can, so yeah. this is yeah, this is a stage rule. Uh, isolated. All characters must complete either a, a separate or uh, so a separate foreboding or wits check. So this is a soul or mind. If you're using those things, uh, the challenge at the end of the scenario. Ta- if they fail, they take one point of damage to mm. each of their things. The current value of the uh, scene because you lowered it mm. is four. Still high. It's a lot. Okay. Still just 1d6, yeah. Still 1d6. And we can spend to... You can, yes, you can spend, but unfortunately you've used up all the weird, so you can't do yeah, what you were doing last time. You can't do weird spend. So I got given a weird point. Can I spend that, or is that You can't something? spend weird, but right. that's slightly mm. different. Okay. Nice try. I'm going to spend a soul, then. I'm going to spend okay. a soul, too. I'm going to spend right. a soul as well. All right. So we're all going with plus ones. Oh, Colin's, Colin's exploded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Colin, are you spending anything before you do your roll? Or no? no, no, I just rolled. Oh my god! I've al- you- I've I've also rolled. I have rolled. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Well, let's go with Colin first. I see him cheeky chappy. So let's go. Five. Yeah, well done, done, Colin. It. You do. <laughs> cool. Colin lives another day. Just for now. For now, uh, Sandy. Uh, sorry, that's me. I was like, yeah. who's Sandy? <laughs> um, uh, 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 five, five, five total. Five total. Ooh, so five four on the dice plus one. Nice work. Uh, Marcus? Uh, five on the dice plus one, six. Very good. Very good. Heather. Come on, Heather. Four. Four. Yeah. Three on the dice. Three on the dice plus one. one. Well done, uh, everybody. <laughs> all right. So... Now we are in between scenes, but it means we can recover ability points as well. We'll do that before we go to break. So everyone can recover one ability point in whatever one they choose. Mm. Now remember, we are playing with uh, two optional rules. One is uh, recovery points via facets and one and recovery points via bonds. We'll do facets first. Does anyone feel like they played to a, a strength or a weakness they had? Uh, and if so, we can sort of discuss it quickly and then go yes or no. So uh, who would like to go? Uh, I would like to say that uh, I definitely went with the overconfident uh, by bolting into the woods mm-hmm. to chase mm-hmm. Gar- mm-hmm. Gareth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pod- Pod- Podlington, yes. Podlington. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. So yeah, put a, yeah. another point in a different skill if you'd like, or the same skill, it does not matter. Anyone else with facets? Uh, uh, I'm going to propose I was nice and foolhardy by picking up the uh, stick figure. <laughs> 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 what do you think, folks? 
Yeah, I think so. Very well, well, I think that's fair. Oh, everyone's being lovely. Like, everyone knows you don't touch the little stick hard. finger in the, in the phone call. I don't think you don't touch do that. The stick that is true. Yeah. You know. That is true. Okay, so another, uh, another point to you. Uh, Sandy... Um, I I was going to try and th- I don't think I have any uh, my two little uh, facets for soul I don't think I really mm-hmm. really did much of so I'm going to go with my brash for mind because I think I was quite yes. I, I stormed a man with a gun with a you, stick you did. Um, which I think good. is brash if nothing else I agree um, yeah feel uh, free to get so I will recover there. my mind that sounds good Heather I'm going to claim irritable. (laughs) (laughs) Which I don't feel as a hard sell. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, to recover at that point as well. So that's the optional rule for facets. Let's talk about our bonds. So when we did our character creation, we each took a a, a bond or a a strong reaction to another character and if that played into the scene at all. So I'll open it up to the floor again. Was there anyone that felt their bond came into play in this uh, scene? Oh, 100%. Um, uh, protective of Colin. Yeah, um, 100%. Uh, uh, even at risk of Noel Kelly's hair. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know. Completely. That sounds uh, good. We'll cover another point. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. Anyone else? I don't think I relied upon Heather at any point. I don't think I have a case for that one. I don't think this time you don't, unfortunately. You, ah. did, you did it in the in the, the, the first scene, I definitely remember, but yeah. no, I, I would say not for this one, which is fair. Ah. Uh, Heather, anything for you? I mean, um, no. I mean, no, Sandy's okay. my least hated co-worker. <laughs> but, you know. I mean, uh, has that continued? Y- yeah. That has continued, but I'm yeah. not well, sure that I would call that I'd, I'd, yeah, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd say it if it's... Because you did tell no, uh, you did tell Colin you hated him, so... <laughs> yeah, I think I've told you, you all that I hate you. At some yeah. Point, except. Sandy. There you go. Yeah. I think that works. That's playing to get that point. That is that point. Yeah, it's not. You were very careful in your wording of that, which was not like, I like Sandy. Yes. yes. Just, I hate Sandy. Least. I hate everyone else more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah. Yeah. And Colin. I yeah. No. I. I. As oh. much as I would love to say that I've been in in awe of Killian, I don't think it's. I've been playing it enough. Like, That's okay. No. At times, but yeah, not enough. No, that's not totally enough. fine. You, you are too. You're too wholesome for the stream, Reese. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and you have to go. <laughs> and you must. And so you must to die. die. And time to die. So. Thank you so much for if you're still with us watching Song there. We're going to take a quick, quick break before we move on to the final scene, which is the river. So we're all going to wave awkwardly at the camera until we go to a break, and we'll see you in five. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back visitors and residents to Sodom Vale for the final part of our little little session here. Um, before the break, our team had made it into the woods to try and find the missing Neville family. And after stumbling on several things, including uh, a couple having sex, <laughs> uh, a hunter that almost shot at them, they also discovered uh, various stick creatures or stick men and, and carvings and drawings indicating the fate of the Neville family. And upon then finding the Neville's uh, clothing, uh, sort of nightwear, they sort of realised that the trail uh, is leading towards the, uh, the, what's it called, the river, the... It's a Ricewell Strait River that Gareth Podlington will be sort of saying to you, the, the, the wonderful poacher that you've picked up at this point. Gareth will say, it's, yeah, well, I mean, no one really goes to the, to the river as you're sort of walking towards it. It's, it's dangerous. Like, it's, it swells and bubbles. And if it's, if it's you know, if it's quite close to this bank, it's going to be quite fierce and stuff. We actually, there's, there should be signs that say, you know, no swimming and stuff. And like, there was a, a fence at one point, but... It's been some years, so who knows, really? So if they've gone for, let's say, some sort of unintentional swim, what what are the odds you'd give them on being alive, Gareth? Two to one? I mean, I wouldn't want to say, like, well, I wouldn't certainly want to be trapped in the river as well. Like, I mean, you hear of, like, kids, you know, teenagers going out trying to swim and there's always someone that gets in trouble there's there's like a 
it's like a bank area, like a big rock is a bit slippery, and they always try and get out and see who can get out the furthest and stuff. So, but but it was it was little market, not it was the other market. It, so, uh, okay, <laughs> so it was not big Marcus and not little Marcus, but the other Marcus. So there's three Marcus, Marcus Marki, who said that they it was time for bath time. Well, they both said that it was time for bath time, and so it meant that they all went, and so they kind of were compelled, and and that that seems like a lot, and it means that they're in danger, and whether they're in danger from Marcai or the other Marcus or the little Marcus or like I mean I I don't think they're in trouble from Big Marcus, but I mean, I Killian, are you angry, Mister Killian? Are you angry with them? I mean, I'm. I, I'm generally quite angry that I'm stuck in these woods going after some children that, according to you, might be dead. But then again, you just developed psychic powers that none of us knew about until now. So, me too. Uh, this has been a hell of a day. <laughs> yeah. So that's three Marcus Marki that they are all <laughs> in danger from. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Right? No, Colin. We don't know. We don't. We don't know exactly what's happening. <laughs> yeah, we don't. Okay. Know what's so let's okay. Let's no, that's just get fair. There and then we'll that's assess. Fair. We'll assess. We'll find out. We'll find out and we'll assess. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's it. It is. It. It is fine. So, the forests of Solemn Vale are home to many rivers and streams that babble through the trees. Some are wide enough to cross by small bridges, and others are large enough to leap from bank to bank. One unassuming length of river, just a few miles into the forest, the Ricewell uh, Strait. About a quarter mile of rugged river is known as it runs along mossy banks and looks to any passerby like another quiet woodland creek. As you sort of come out of the woods and you see this river, you see that uh, around on the other side and on the other side of the bank, there is indeed... Uh, a fence of some sort, a, a sort of wire fence with a sign saying, keep out at danger here, uh, do not swim. The usuals have been sort of rusted over the years and clearly uh, easy to jump over or, or head across. Across a, let's see, across a sort of um, flat bed, like a little bit of a, a sandy sort of, not sandy, sorry, a sort of muddy sort of dune. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, sorry, Sandy, dead. <laughs> uh, and a little bit of a sort of flat rock, which has been splashed by lots of little um, well, bits of the river and stuff. You see Marcus. Little Marcus. Dressed in his pyjamas. There's no mistaking that sort of, like, the picture that Noel had with his letter of Marcus uh, wearing his nightclothes. In front of him, in the shallows of the pool, of the river, floating, face down. Colin runs in. Um... I think, uh, yeah, I mean, Sandy's going to go... Sandy's not going to stop him. Sandy's going to go with him. But I think before she does... Just to clarify, oh, just yeah. to clarify, I just realised, uh, Marcus is not the one that's face down. Sorry. Who's, I mean, is there anyone face down in yes. a river? Yes. I think, I think that probably doesn't make much of a difference to Colin. I'm there are three people a... face down in a river. Right. Yeah, Colin will run to... I'm just making sure and that... ...drag he... some out. Okay. <laughs> Um, Killian is not running down and he's going to grab a hold of Noel to make sure he doesn't go. Noel feels it as well and you easily grab him around the neck. Um, uh, And I I think before Sandy goes to help um, to help Colin she's going to look at the rifle that she's been sort of uh, idly fiddling with this whole time oh not the whole time but some of the way on the on the journey and then just turn around to Killian who has commented that he's been hunting before and has handled a gun mm-hmm. and just be like look I don't know who I'm kidding with this but if this gets fucking weird and I'll hand I hand him the gun yeah sure I'll I'll hold this thanks Heather yeah you see the bodies, but you are looking at Marcus, and he is face out to the river, Marcus. looking at something he cannot see. Are you doing anything, Heather? 
I'm going to approach. I'm not going to rut a sprint, but I'm going to approach the fence. And Heather's going to fall out. Marcus? Marcus, I, I... I know the people across the road. Um... Can you, can you get away from the river, please? It's it's pretty dangerous. Colin, if you're going into the water to save the people in it, I need you to do either an obstruction or a pursuit check, which is body. The challenge value is nine. <laughs> 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 Okay, I am just... We're in a new scene, so there are five weird points up for grabs. Take them cool. all. <laughs> you so also, just... <laughs> it's also a group check as well, so people can help. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely so... going to help. I'm definitely going to help. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm, I'll, yeah. I'll throw in a, a point if if a point, if that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, I'll, I'll put in a point. Yeah. A point yeah, from a point. body? Point from yeah. body. Yes. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, any, so wait, wait, wait. Any, one any, from body. Any, any other points for body? So there's one, one, one from, from Sandy. Uh, two, so it's two currently. It's one from Heather as well. Okay. So I'll a point of body too. You'll get a, a shouting word of encouragement from the bank. Yep. Okay. You're plus four to this roll. And I rolled a four. So I'm going to take a point of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Four weird, baby! Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> You're rolling on that, 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Colin, I need you to pick one of the nipples to save. You have Ian. You have Angie. Two parents. And you have Lucy. Um. Is, is anyone closest? Is the who's the, who's furthest away? They are sort of drifting in the water, face down. And it looks like they're going out towards the rush of the river. You only have time to get one of them. Ah, uh, get yeah, Lucy. Yeah, you rush in. You get to sort of like almost I'll, I'll waist help. height. I will. I will yep. be like helping him pull her out of the river. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You pull her out. She's cold to the touch. I need a first aid. Uh, does anyone does anyone know first aid? Yeah, I know first aid. Heather, 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 what and does that mean? And the creature has noticed you both, has marked you both. So if you roll your weird pools, so that is however many points in weird you have, you roll those Shit. d6s, and you need to tell me what the highest number is, both of you. Shit, I have three of those. You do. I have one of them. Mm-hmm. Is there any way to assuage that? Is there any way to be like, oh, hi, I'm here too. <laughs> Take me, not, not on a not on a, a weird check. It's me, Colin. <laughs> okay, not on a weird check, unfortunately. Right. Not on a weird influence roll. I have rolled, and yes. I got a two. You got a two. Okay, Heather, what's your highest number? Five. There is a moment, Heather, as you sort of like are talking to Marcus that you realize it's not Marcus. The back Fine. of this cut just child's head. You realize there's like a a glistening wetness to the child. And that the pajamas are soaked. And as you look down at where the cuffs of the pajamas are, water is dripping. The entity that looks like Marcus turns back to you and you see a void. The hair plastered to its head. 
the eyes, like almost like tears, were constantly, continually going down the face, the voice, the sort of mouth open. It's bath time. I need you, Helen, to roll me. And I appreciate we made a fun of it last time, but I need you to roll me a Tate check. Sorry. No, I know. Sorry, sorry. I'm genuinely Challenge. nervous. I didn't mean Challenge. to Challenge value eight. Tate Can... is uh, related to soul. Can anyone help? You, uh, not on this well you can, if you use a point of weird you can be in the scene you can be with them this is currently an individual check but if you want to help I'll help point of weird take a point of weird uh, yeah I'll help as much as I can okay and I'll I'll, I'll give a, a point of soul I'll burn two points of soul mm-hmm. okay that's three uh, I can I, I, I can burn two points of soul no no, don't. Oh, no. I'll throw one in as well. I'll throw one in as well. Are you going to take a point of weird, Sunday? I would have to take a point of weird, which would leave us with how much? Uh, you got two left. I'll do it. I'll do, I'll do it to save. Okay. I'll do it to save Heather. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you got four. I'll roll. Yeah. I rolled a six. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the way this entity says it's bath time, it's playtime, it almost is like a sing song, verbally almost. And there's a moment you suddenly realize that your hands are sort of clasped to your shirt, your blouse, and it looks like you've undone one button as if to get undressed and you go. <laughs> we need a first aider. What do you guys do? I'm I'm I am aider. reaching out. I am reaching out behind me towards Noel and like just with the with my eyes sort of fixed on this mm-hmm. monster child mm-hmm. and not opening my mouth very much I'm just going Noel lighter give me your lighter I I told you I given up He's, you were fucking smoking earlier. Now is not the fucking time. time, time, time. Yeah, gives you a lighter. Killian, okay. what are you doing? Kind of want to pull the trigger on the kid. You know, do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it. <laughs> um, yeah, go for it. What an incredible <laughs> sentence. Um, are, you going to, are you going to do that, Killian? Yeah. Weird, freaky child with void eyes turned around. He's not hesitating. Okay. You shoot point blank, like straight. And it's like almost a bullet goes through water. (laughs) Suddenly, this creature goes like almost like inky blackness. Whatever pretense it had of being Marcus has gone and it screams. Killian, I need you to make me either. a threat check, uh, a challenge value seven, or an invocation check, which is challenge rating six, as suddenly, as the kid sort of screams, water bursts out of the river and tries to grab you, these horrible sort of tendrils, these pond fronds tries to grab you. Is invocation soul? Soul, yes, a threat is body, Uh, invocation is soul. And it's currently, oh. it is currently a uh, individual check. You have two points left in the weird pool. Um, do, is there, again, is there a way to help? If you take uh, a point of weird, yeah, you can. Yeah, only with a point, because it's individual. Yeah. I'll do the invocation, and I'll burn yep, six. three soul. Oh, okay. How much do you have left, man? Two, after that. Okay. 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 Go for it. That would be two on the die, so five. So if I take a point of weird, that's six? Yes. Do it. Yeah. I'm going to have to. <laughs> These watery tendrils try and wrap around you and start to like you. You it wraps around the the rifle, and it 
pulled you. You could feel the strength of the river pulling you down. You, you were slipping on the rock face. And you hold on until eventually uh, the gun goes off into the river. But you can see the rock. It is so slippery. And you see the burbling of these these, these river, the, the, sort of the way the rocks are. If you had fallen, if you'd gone in, you don't know what would have happened. Big Marcus, uh, uh, Mr. Killian. <laughs> I'll go to to pull Killian now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, easy enough to do. Uh, I, uh, while that's happening, I will uh, bring uh, Noel's lighter up in my left hand. Uh, this probably isn't going to work. I will strike it. Mm-hmm. And then my my uh, right hand is gonna reach down into the bag, and it's gonna come up with a big old can of hairspray. Heck yeah! It's just that stuff that keeps Noel's hair like pie Ooh. resistant. You know, like you can take a hundred pies to the face, and it doesn't even move. Like this stuff is like the fact that he he had to quit smoking because he was in serious danger of just blowing his Lighting own head up, up yeah, yeah, every yeah. time. Um, <laughs> Uh, shellac in a can and, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna try and burn this thing that's clearly made of water which is very dumb uh, but there but you it, go it reached out with um, these fronds yeah, these sort yeah, of yeah, like yeah. things so. I, I, it's that or try and stab it with scissors and I don't want to go that near it so um, <laughs> I am gonna uh, uh, hairspray flamethrower in it All right. please yeah, I mean, you do. You, you go, you, you know, it sort of screams, and it's again, it's going to do its sort of spirit tendril attack. So uh, I would say you've kind of, you're doing sort of a, a physical thing. Yeah. I think it's a threat roll of seven. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to spend two points of my, uh, no, let's call it three points of my own body um, to attempt to leap athletically mm-hmm. uh, out of the way. Um, that'll put me down to two points left if I spend three. Um, two points of body left. Um, seven I need. Seven you need. I can't, I don't think I can in good conscience take any from anyone else. I can't, I can't give you any more. That's fine. I've got one weird pool. Do I take uh, the weird pool? Do I take that to save myself? If you, you gotta roll it, roll it and see. Oh, sure, yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, so it's a three. I need seven. Ah, that's a fucking six on the dice. Yes! The fronds uh, light up, and again, the, the sort of, like, it doesn't, as you write in thought, the water, but it, it stops the, uh, stops it, it's sort of, it's focus, it's intensity is straight on you, Sandy, and yet the water, it's, it hits at your feet as you sort of back away and say, and this time, uh, Colin, you're getting the other people out of the water, you can do so. The, uh, the, the way everyone has been focusing their attention on it, you're sort of helping yeah. a little bit, and you, you, you're desperately trying to go, what I need from you, Colin, Just- though. Mm-hmm. You're in the water. Oh, Colin. Yeah. We're going to continue to save the Nevels. We need to do either an obstruction or a pursuit. Challenge cool. value nine. <laughs> <laughs> I have one point of body left. You do. Mm-hmm. There is a point of weird where you cool. could use anything is, else. Is this individual? Sorry, did you say it was individual? This is, uh, it, it is, it, well, there's only one point in, left in the pool, so someone could spend it to join the scene, but right. they'd have to spend from their body. Mm, I could do that and give you one. No, <laughs> yeah, man. no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't know if there's a way of us, I could, oh. Couldn't you spend the I point spend of weird, weird to use different to use a different mm-hmm. stat? You could do that. Do that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yep. Do yeah. that, Colin. Yes. I'm gonna do that. All right. Spending that final point of weird in the scene. Colin's yep. the true hero. What are you using? He always was. How are you using Colin? Some, Some heroes don't wear capes. Some but Colin heroes. definitely would if people would let him. <laughs> like if he got a cape, he'd be so jazzed. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and okay, he's if he makes gonna... it out of this, I'm getting him a cape. Uh, he's going to use every point of his mind. <laughs> How many points is that? That'd be three. Okay. Yeah. 
so it's plus three, so you need... So currently, it's uh, the... Uh, it will be uh, a six is what you need on the die. It's and a that's, that is genuinely the only thing in my arsenal Fuck. that I have anything All more right. than two yeah. in. All right, okay. all right. Send, send Reese your energy. He rolled a six. The boy rolled a six. You know he rolled a six. That's a man who rolled hang a six. On, hang on, we'll find out. That is a six. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, Come on, this Colin. This is so stressful. Uh, None of these people are real. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, so having burned, he so using his his wits or yep. logic yep. or whatever it is, yep. he grabs the the stick and just kind of like yes. hooks and brings them and it just gathers them just, up, just yelling, just stick up, Colin, stick up, the whole time, stick up, Colin, stick up, stick up. Oh my god! Uh, yes, uh, and because there was a moment where there was almost a choice where you you sort of grab maybe. And you can see Ian's body slowly but surely almost out of sight, and you go, and you 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 split yourself. There is a moment, Colin, when you lose your footing and you are suddenly in the swirl. There's a moment of panic, and you just get it together, Colin. And you bring them back slowly, and you bring them to the edge of things, pull them out onto the bank slowly. This, this will be the moment where he says to himself, resist every urge that you have to make noise, Colin. <laughs> and we'll bring them back in. And yes, they are cold. They're cold uh, currently. But and they're, they're not lost to the river. To those people who are on the bank, mm. this creature, this sort of water weird type thing, you can see there is a moment where it sort of sputters. Killian, your mark was true. You shot this thing and it's sputtering and you can see out of it a hand comes out, a small childlike hand, and you can hear cries as the Marcus within is trying to escape the water weird. Oh. I'll grab the hand. Yeah, I'm gonna help him. Okay. This is. Hmm. Is it raining water? No. Is it's Noel helping too? <laughs> he will, but that's not an extra point for you, unfortunately. He Shame. is. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Gareth are on the bank going, oh my god! Oh! Oh no! Gareth, we get out of this. They're not helping at all! They're both getting slapped. This is... This is a threat or pursuit check. Challenge value, seven. Is pursuit Uh, mind? Pursuit is... No, they're both bodies. bodies. It's weird. I don't know why it says one or the other when you would be spending from body. Yeah, remind me what happens if you... If you... If you... uh, If I spend both of my remaining body points, is that me done? No, no, not at all. It's just me done unless... If I... Sorry, I'll let you explain it. It's okay, it's okay. No, no, I appreciate it. It's very (laughs) tense right now. So if you uh, reduce zero in one of your stats, Mm -hmm. the stat is uh, scratched out, which means you cannot use that stat for anything else. If I say for example you fail something else and I say you take, I don't know, some more damage to that stat and it's already scratched out, you are defeated. Basically, it is like you're on death's door. Something happens that you are are sort of barely standing and another hit could take you out completely. Mm -hmm. So that's that is the okay. the idea behind it. Well, given that we're um, given that we're trying to get a child out, this is this is save the kid territory here. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm willing to spend both points if that. What do we need? It's, seven. What have you, you said? Seven. Yeah. Uh, I was going to put two points towards this. Uh, what if I do one? You do two. We have for three, and then we shake it out that way or I could do one more and make it four and you know what we're, we're 37 minutes from yeah, roughly let's... the end of the stream <laughs> I'm going to spend both points let's do this okay. let's do this let's create some drama okay. so I reach out to grab little Marcus's hand and I grab Sandy's hand on the other side and kind of yep. do like a tug of war chain yep. see if I can pull him out all right, well, we'll come to Sandy's uh, scratched out ability in a second, but yeah, that's roll for us. That's plus three. Seven or higher. Plus four. Plus four, plus four. sorry, sorry, plus four. Uh, 
Come on, buddy. Oh, no. That was a two. Oh, fuck. No. no. That's not good enough. No, it's not. Killian. No. You're trying to drag you, you, you and Sandy are pulling and pulling, and his head comes out of this creature's chest. You can see he is frightened, the eyes of it, and then suddenly there is a pull, and pfft, Sandy, you slip, you hit the rock face, your uh, uh, body is scratched out, you are, you've broken your arm, essentially. Mm. It is, you, you've hit, you've hit, hurt yourself quite badly on the slippery rock. Killian, you go head first into the water weird. Mm. You are dragged down through the water, Killian. For failing the check, you suffer four body damage. Ooh, I only have one. Okay, you are also uh, blacked out. Uh, you are scratched that ability out currently. Okay. That's uh, the last time I help anyone. In, in, <laughs> the, in the spirit of full disclosure, I think yes. seeing as I spent three spirit, three points of mind just to get past the previous one, I believe mm-hmm. that means that my mind is scratched out as okay. well. Uh, yeah, you are, you are, you are screaming in terror, Colin. It is, it is. You are seeing, you've just seen your director Save get yourself, pulled Heather. into. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Been pulled into the thing. Yeah, Heather. <laughs> Let's go! Or maybe Noel okay. or Gareth could fucking do something. <laughs> I want to see what Heather does first. I'm going to look the weird square in the face. Right. I don't know what you are, but what do you want? I want a friend for playtime. But you killed your friends. They You're killing were your friends. not true friends. Marcus is my friend. Marcus is trapped. Marcus is drowning. He will be with me forever and ever and ever and ever. Where did you come from? What are you? <laughs> Poor little Marcus walking in the woods. Poor lonely Marcus not having any friends. Everyone laughing at him for his silly little dreams, dreaming of a babbling brook. He slipped and fell and hurt his head. And when he woke up, I was here. I said we would be friends. I wouldn't laugh at him. I would make him more powerful than he ever realized. Water is incredibly powerful. He went home and he tried to tell his mummy and daddy, but mummy and daddy thought he was telling stories and making up lies. His sister laughed at him. Well, she's not laughing much anymore. His friend, Becky, <laughs> thought it would be funny if, like, he, he teased her and, and all the things. I said not to worry his little head about these things, that he can come join me in the river. He didn't want to go with his family, so I said they can come too. But they were not worthy of being my friends. Marcus? Marcus isn't here right now. Marcus? Becky is very sad and she is worried about you. What a shame. I'm going to walk into the weird. What's your purpose? What's what's your plan? To try and just to try and get into it and see if I don't know. Pull people, pull Marcus out. Get into it and try and fight it from within. I don't know. There's nothing else left to try. No, 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 it's fine. I, I'm going to yeah. give you some options. So you've seen that you could try pulling out yeah. Marcus. You could try pulling out one of your friends that is within this water weird. The other thing 
that this creature has made clear to you, Heather, is that it needs a friend. It wants something, and it has taken Marcus currently. You think if it's satisfied with having a new playmate, it will let everyone go. Yeah. It's going to be difficult to pull out Killian and Marcus, isn't it? What are you doing, Heather? I'm going to try a battle of the wits or the battle of the soul and, and try and take the place of Marcus. Colin's going to run in. Heather, I need you to make for me a pressure check. Challenge value eight. No. Joke's on you, I have four mind. Is it, um, is it, is it, can we help? Yeah, uh, we need I'm, to I'm, my arm, is, my arm is broken, but I, I, I could, I can. Do you, what are you, what are you, those people running in? I, what are you doing? Uh, Killian. the inside. You <laughs> hear this all Killian as well, yes. So what yeah. I'd say, everyone is involved in this check. <laughs> the police are here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, it, you know, if you're going to spend points, it is mind. Great. Mind, I will, um, what, what was the check? Challenge value eight. Eight. Uh, how many do you want, James? I'll burn all four. Uh, I can so, burn so, so, two so, mind. Yeah, I can give you, uh, I can give you th- three, two. All right. I've what got you, no mind to burn, but I, yeah. I, I, You're going, you're going into, you're, you're still here. <laughs> Those people who are burning stuff, just okay. Because this is the thing. So, what are you doing to help? Because I appreciate it, you're just you're trying to add to the role. But what is it that you're doing with mine to help? So, for me, I was thinking. So, I was holding onto Marcus as I got pulled yes, into the water. Weird. Yep. As we're in this weird watery place, I don't know if I could talk to Child Marcus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as I go in, I'll be like, "Hey, kid." Good, you're, you're Marcus, right? <laughs> hey, hey, little guy. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hey, it's cool, it's cool. You don't need to apologize. Don't worry, we're here to help. We're we're, we're gonna help you. It's my fault. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to bring the bad. I didn't mean to bring it. I didn't mean to bring it. Hey, 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 don't you worry about that. Only thing I want you to do right now is focus on me. <laughs> and push away any thoughts of that thing. I want you to throw them out of here. That thing doesn't matter to you. You don't care about it. Screw that thing. Whatever the hell it is, that little weird mirror of you, it's not important, all right? You know what's important? What's important? You are. <laughs> you. You, kiddo, you're important. And you know what? Noel's out there. He's Noel? your hero, right? No. Yeah. No, and he Kelly. wants to meet you. What? Yeah, no Kelly. He He's had, he, right out there. He answered my letter. He did. That's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. He's going to help you, but you need to help yourself first. And I'm going to be here to help you. Does that okay. make sense? We're all helping each other. All right, I'd say you are justified in giving those points to James. Yeah. Uh, 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 Sandy, what are you doing? Um, I think I'm going to, if it's okay, uh, mm-hmm. I think my move is going to come from hearing... Killian, like, kind of yeah. frantically, like, beginning to talk to yeah, this it's kid. Like a, it's weird. It's almost like a burble of water that you can almost hear Killian on. As he's, yeah, as he's, he's kind of beginning to talk, and I'm going to push myself up on my arm that is not broken, um, and I'm going to I'm gonna stagger over to Noel, who I assume is terrified and, yeah. you know, frozen to the spot. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna look him in the eyes, and I'm going to say, he came here to talk to the fucking kid so yeah. talk to the fucking kid okay 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 uh, uh, hey hey kid it's me you're, you're uh, a part of Noel's heroes so I'm here to speak to one Marcus Neville uh, is Marcus Neville here I'm, I'm, I'm looking to, uh, we've got Lord Peter he's, he's gonna find us we need I need your help to defeat Lord Peter I'd say you can spend those minds as well thank you so how many is that in total from you two? Uh, I'm giving in two. two. I was giving two yeah. as well. You get four. And I'm spending four. Okay, well, let's roll that, let's roll that d6 just in case. <laughs> uh, I roll a three. So you want yeah. to succeed. Rush it. So Heather. Yeah. You succeed. 
the creature yeah. sort of looks at you and says, you? Yeah. Yeah, me. <laughs> Forever and ever. Yeah, forever and ever. I don't have any friends either, so let's 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 dance. And suddenly, almost sloshing out, Killian and Marcus go out, and Heather. The last thing you see is this water weird sort of whipping up into the air and going straight towards you. It sort of envelops your body and goes down your throat. You can feel it permeating all of your cells, all of your your skin, and it just becomes you. And the last thing you see is your friends as your body moves and starts to walk across the river into the swell. Because it's it's bath time now. It's playtime. Yeah. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get Colin's hand. Mm-hmm. I only have one other hand. Um, I'm gonna get Colin's hand. Yeah. No, tell you what. Oh, fuck yeah, I get Colin's hand, and I say, I'm like, Killian, Killian, we have to go. They need a first aider. You can see on the bank, the water leaving the, uh, the nevels, like sort of coming out to their their throats and their noses and their eyes, and you can see that <laughs> as Ian is starting to come around. Uh, Killian, you are holding little Marcus. Mm. He's shivering, completely wet and sodden, crying into your shoulder. I kind of pick him up. I don't know how big he is. Like if he's small enough to he's be kind much of smaller than you. Up. Yeah, it's very small. He's a ten year old boy, but he seems very small for his age. Mm. No, um, <laughs> bring him over to the rest of the group and kind of walk away from, I guess, where Heather is disappearing. Mm-hmm. It's like, maybe I'll look over my shoulder of just, I can't do anything. Send uh, we can't, we can't, we can't let them go. We can't let Heather go. We can't let her go. We can't. We, we can't. Colin. Colin. We can't let her go. We have to. We have She's to. got all the paperwork. No, it, I don't think, I think we're past that now. No, but she's think, she she worked she worked so hard for this. I, I know. I know. Colin. I know. Colin, we saved the kid. All right. And the, and the family, they're alive because of you, Colin. But it's Heather. Yeah. I know. I know. But it's Heather. She's our friend, and we need we need to make sure she's okay. That's how this works. We we're, we're heroes. We we make sure that everyone is safe. Yeah. Colin. Yeah. Colin. yeah and that's. And Noel sort of comes over and goes, "I'm." I'm sorry. Okay. And it just holds you, Colin. But she's there. No. She's right there. No, she's not. And you see Colin, Heather walk on the water, deeper and deeper into the swells until you can't see her anymore. We can't. She doesn't. The scene fades. Mm. You end up back in Solemn Vale. Many police cars come around. They all start to take your statements. Uh, You give whatever statement you wish, the truth, a lie. Uh, The Neville's, uh, certainly the, uh, the two parents and Lucy, shivering slightly in thermal uh, blankets and stuff given um you see they're talking and sort of like whispering quite a bit you see marcus uh is unless somebody's with him is is being talked to by the police is put in not in the back of a police van or anything like that but is sort of separated from the other two and he tells the story of how he was so lonely that he dreamt of a friend and that the friend told him that to be friends forever he had to do something a big sacrifice and there's a lot of talk and maybe days weeks later unlikely that sandy colin and marcus killian sees this but 
the family. They, um... Discussing how they are, so they are indebted to you. They have no idea how they ended up in the river without their clothing or anything like that. They were just so grateful for a television crew of three people to come along and save them. Marcus is sent away. He continues to say quite loudly that it wasn't... He, he was told to do it. He said the the boy in the water told him to do it. And he sticks to the story even when he's sent away to an institution where it's said that he does no more harm to anyone. Killian, what do you do after the instance in Sodom Vale? Killian... I think he resigns. I think he leaves his role at the BBC and he kind of goes back to one of his family's kind of country houses mm. and he sort of ignores a lot of people. He doesn't really want to be seen or talked to. Mm -hmm. And he spends a lot of time alone. Killian, I need you to roll me a weird influence check, please. So roll all of your weird and tell me what the highest number is. Three. You don't... Th you try not to think too much of Sodom Vale. You know, when you hear the name Cook in the news, only ever so briefly, maybe you look go down to Cornwall for other things, perhaps, but you shiver. But eventually, the feelings you had with Solomon Vale fade away. It's not completely healed over, but you keep yourself to yourself, as you said, but you do not. You escape, so to speak. Sandy. I think uh, once her arm has healed, mm. um, I think Sandy takes like um, like an extended sort of leave. I think sort of compassionate leave kind of thing after uh, you know time to sort of recover after everything that that had, that had kind of happened. Um, and I think she ends up going back to Solemn Vale. Um, and I think she ends up walking back through the woods and trying to find the river again. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing if she can find Heather. Uh, and I don't know how successful she would be, but I think she tries to. Sandy, could you roll for me an influence weird check? Yes. And tell me what the highest number that you get is. Uh, and remind me that is... All your, uh, so all your points in weird, that's the number of d6s you roll. And then tell me what the highest value you roll is. Okay. Mm. Uh, that, uh, six. I don't know if that's good or not, but... Makes six, sense. Six. Makes sense. The pull to Solemn Vale. It makes sense. Maybe you settle then. You go back, you know, you go and look for Heather, you don't find her, but when you return, go back past the, the old Neville house, they seem to have moved out now. You see Alan. He says, he sort of waves you. Uh, you sit and you stop to chat. Mm. He hands you um, some uh, homebrew cider. And he sort of, like, listens and he sort of takes your concerns and, and invites you to go get a drink at the Bowler's Arms um, and says he just has to go off shift and stuff. And when you drink the cider, I don't know what it is. There's something delicious about it, almost sort of, like, not addictive, but it's definitely a sense of numbingness 
to mm -hmm. the stuff. And suddenly, I don't know, a month goes by and you're still in Solemn Vale. Mm -hmm. You are looking at the Bowler's Arms, uh, where the proprietor is always happy that to see you there. People start to greet you as a local. And I will leave the rest of Sandy's history up to you, but slowly but surely, the weird ensnares you. Yeah, something, something in the water, huh? Mm. Yeah. Colin, what happens to you after the incident at the river? Carries on working at the BBC. Takes every course in first aid available. Wants so hard to be like Heather. Tries to kind of remember what she was like. And after time, the image of her kind of dissipates. And so the idea just is the only thing that drives him. And so he finds himself doing things that he thinks that she would like. He Colin. doesn't sing anymore. Oh. <laughs> Colin, I'm going to ask you for the same thing. An influence weird roll, please. Yeah. So that's all your weird points into D6s. Tell me what the highest number is. <laughs> <laughs> that's a six. That's, yeah, that's a lot of dice all saying six. Mm -hmm. uh, most saying six, but yeah. That's quite fun. Maybe it's some years. You know, you try and follow in Heather's footsteps. You know, you do you do well. Maybe you get to higher up the production scale mm -hmm. to a point where you also become a producer. And you insist... You have to go back to Solemn Vale. There's, there's something that happened and you want to report on it. You maybe start picking up news clippings of other people who have gone missing in the woods of Solemn Vale. You try and find reports of like old folklore of witchcraft happening around the, uh, the, 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 the river as well. You're trying to piece it all together and one day you turn up, bags in hand, maybe... You go into the bowler's arms and you suddenly see Sandy there, reunited, having a drink of the good stuff as it's sort of put on the board, and it numbs the pain. And people treat you as old friends, a local, stand-up guy. Works for the BBC, you know. Maybe we could maybe we can get some bail on the views. They've got a, a little festival here, they, you know, like a prettiest town in Britain. Be nice to get some coverage for once. You're welcome. The, we the weird has ensnared you. You're part of some veil. Heather, I'd like you to make me a weird influence roll check, please. Three. What becomes of Heather, would you say? I think Heather... wants to... I think Heather will feel that feeling of... This is a, a creature of loneliness, right? Mm -hmm. It's a creature of isolation. Mm -hmm. It's a creature of abandonment and mm -hmm. friendlessness. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever is left of Heather, mm. she's going to take all those feelings and take every part of that dark creature. Mm -hmm. She's going to pull it in and she's going to hold it tight, mm -hmm. and she's going to kill it. Exactly. You do not succumb to the weirdness of Solemn Vale. And sort of time passes, and again, you maybe see people along the bank, people that try and do skinny dipping in the, the water, and you resist every urge, till eventually 
you face down your bath time playmate. You keep people safe till eventually it and your strength dwindles until you cancel each other out. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session of Son of Mill. Sorry, I'm crying already. Wow. <laughs> oh, <you. laughs> Ooh. Absolutely. Oh, man. Absolutely crying. Fuck. Thank you was... so much. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. If you're still with us. Oh, man. I'm an absolute bloody mess. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for Son of Mill. We're going to go back around the other way so people can do their quick outros and stuff. And I'll tell you where you can get Son of Mill after this. So I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful Sandy Pip. <laughs> Let's go, my friend. Uh, oh. Hello. Um, uh, uh, I've been Pip Gladwin, um, uh, and uh, uh, you can find me um, over on Realms of Peril and Glory uh, or on Twitter, because that's what it's called, at Pip <laughs> underscore Gladwin. Um, and I'm going to leave James to do the uh, uh, shout-outs for whatever he feels is worthy of shouting out this evening. Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pip, and welcome back to Song there. Yay. Uh, let's go I to never want to leave. You never want to leave. Hey, no one ever leaves. I can't, can't don't leave. Wanna. I'm going to forever with Alan. <laughs> Colin. Colin. Uh, uh, let's go, Reese. Um, hello, my name's Reese Lawton, and uh, I'm uh, kind of representing Who Lives, Who Dies, uh, with which is a weekly, uh, sorry, bi-weekly uh, actual play stream. Um, but also I do a couple of other podcasts. I produce the Quantum Leopard comedy podcast, uh, which does a lot of interviews from the nicest comedy night in London. Um, but you can hear me all over the place because I, I like I like doing nice things with lovely people, um, evidenced by this entire evening. Um, <laughs> but also... Uh, you can find more about me on reeselawson.com uh, because social media I have absolutely no coherence with. <laughs> I have so many usernames all over the place. But uh, yeah, reeselawson.com is where you can find what the hell I'm up to. But yeah, and also perils like perils uh, like realms of peril and glory is just fucking glorious. I cannot stress enough how amazing it is. Please, oh, please follow them as well. Nice. It's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Oh, That's very nice. cute. Uh, next up is our, our beloved Heather James. Hi, hi. Uh, I'm James Barbarossa. Um, I am on Twitter at Barbarossa Fan. Uh, every week, I post the music that I make for Realms of Peril and Glory. I also am on Realms of Peril and Glory, and Realms of Peril and Glory has a live show coming up in Yay. London. Uh, it's at the London Podcast Festival. It's Sunday, September the 10th. We're at we're at 4 30 p.m mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. tickets are are still going they're nine pound yep. fifty each uh if you want to go to realmspod.com slash live you can get your tickets there um it's going to be uh, if you're if you listen to the show and you're a fan of the show it's going to be great for you if you've not listened to it it will be a great time for you as well mm -hmm. um all of our sort of main cast are going to be in it, including the wonderful uh, Pip Gladwin, uh, who we we do not deserve the talents of, <laughs> um, and um, that's going to be at that's going to be at King's Place, which is which is mm. near King's Cross. So if you are in London um, and you are looking for something to do that Sunday, please please do come along because we'll uh, we'll enjoy you being there. Oh, thank you. And then last but by no means least, Marcus Killian the Third, Adam. <laughs> Yes, I am Adam. I am the DM over at Gunpowder Treason, no plot, a cosmic horror themed homebrew D&D podcast where I just go around inflicting maddening horrors on my players yeah. for their personal entertainment and yours at home. Mm, fantastic. Um, yeah, and I've been Lord Peter. No, wait, I'll reverse that. I <laughs> know, oh. uh, uh, he never appeared. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it is weird for me to be like, I fucking wish Lord I Peter wish Lord had been turned up. I wish Lord Peter had been there. I'm sad. I'm oh, wow. so sad. I'm not. I'm really glad uh, that Lord I have Peter a, wasn't there. I have a mental picture of Killian in that country home, and he's sat in an armchair in front yeah. of a fire, and in yeah. the armchair across from him is Lord Peter, just the costume he's yeah, just yeah. staring at it staring at it yeah it's back um. and forth <laughs>
Uh, well, when I'm not no, playing Lord you. Peter, uh, <laughs> you can find me. I've been the wonderful narrator. Well, I am wonderful, but I've been the narrator for Solemn Vale. Um, you can get Solemn Vale uh, on uh, Drive for RPG, the Kickstarter, the pre, the back of kit. If you want a physical copy, uh, it's coming out. They've also got a PDF <laughs> of uh, some scenarios that you can use. Uh, tonight's and last week's uh, scenario is called Footprints, which is in the core book. If you'd like to go through and look at it, uh, there are some other ones in there should you wish to do it. This one was just a nice teaser, just one to get you into mm-hmm. the game. Uh, so try to check that out on dirtyvortex.net. Um, but uh, you can find me. I do What Am I Rolling, which is twice monthly RPG One Shot podcast and the DMs Book Club. But that's not great. I really would highly recommend checking out all these wonderful wonderful folks who have dealt so, dealt so well with a lot of horror thrown up tonight uh you know i'd recommend checking out those shows and if you'd like afterwards come check me out but also try and get your own copy of solemn bell because i think it is an absolutely cracking setting and mm. i think it's a really cool way of making stories absolutely and uh, last thing to say is that thank you so much to John, John, our wonderful producer, who has been scoring it, who's been looking after us in chat, and is the, the person at Actual Play UK. So thank you so much for allowing me to be like, hey, I've got an idea. Uh, <laughs> I hear that, uh, you know. Um, but the other things I just want to say before we quickly leave out and we do our Stars of Wishes off stream is that uh, please, please, please subscribe to this channel, subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe everywhere that it says Actual Play UK. The more people that subscribe, they'll going to hear about all the different cool actual plays that our uk tabletop rpg podcast folks will be able to do and it's just it's just a really nice way to really support people so please please subscribe share like comment all the wonderful things we can do we've got some some streams coming up folks we've still got our delta green mini campaign which is going on we've got uh, trolls of two ton bridges we've got realms of parallel glory i wonder who those guys are uh, and gunpowder trees and no plots i don't know who those guys are um <laughs> And Chaotic Neutral Games, they're still going out through Thursday, so please check that out. On the 1st and 8th of September, the Fridays, we have a D&D one-shot, Drake's on a Plane, with D20 Future Show, League of Stupid, uh, that's how it said, uh, two, two Cobalts in a trench coat, some other heroes, and the Troll of Two Ton Bridges again. So if, you, if you're like, whoa, that was too much emotion for me, I just want d and I'm like, well, wait till the 1st of, and 8th of September. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, there is a well-deserved break, because uh, frankly, there's been every Friday we've had lots and lots of actual play UK stuff so please uh, we're going to be a short break for the 14th uh, and uh, so the 15th and then they'll be back with more more stuff so check out the Delta Green uh, check out the Delta Green streams I'll get there my emotions are running high uh, <laughs> and the D&D stream in early September uh, thank you for watching actual play UK you can find them all on the social medias and stuff at actual play UK and there's only one thing to say is that thank you for visiting Solomon Vale we hope you come again soon mm. and with that we'll wave goodbye bye everyone bye 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 One of My Rolling podcast was created, recorded, and edited by me, Fiona Howard. This episode's players were Pip, James, Adam, and Reese. This episode's RPG was Solemn Vale, a narrative-driven storytelling game where the players tell abhorrent tales of horror and the supernatural. Published by Dirty Vortex. You can find out more and grab your own copy on their website, dirtyvortex.net. The theme music was 8 Bit March by Twin Musicon of twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamyrollingpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, follow the podcast on social media at wair underscore podcast for latest news on upcoming episodes. Also, join our Discord. There's a link in the show notes. And remember, adventurers need not apply. <laughs>